Sprite Castle. Sprite Castle. Sprite Castle. Put your robo here. Sprite Castle. Alright. Welcome to the show where I eat Scooby Snacks. <laughs> yum, yum, yum. Oh, that's wrong. What did I do with that? Oh, no. I put the wrong background on there. Hmm. Well, that's a problem. I gotta fix that. Hey, everyone, what's going on, my friend? I am, uh. What am I doing? What am I doing? I just rechanged. I changed everything, but. Here's your layer of Scooby Snacks, by the way. Yum, 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 yum. Yum, yum, yum. Re-wishes. But. I think I put my background, um, hello, Mr. Quad, hey, Quad Russell's now following, how are you doing, um, yeah, hey, Delta, so, um, it's a little misleading, uh, to call him, uh, my father-in-law, he, he is a, um, uh, my mother-in-law's husband, of the past 10 years, which is not to make it to be um, jerky about it, but my, um, hey look, hear that, that's the second little pack of Scooby Snacks, these things are good. Um, so yeah, he was, uh, my uh, uh, mother-in-law was uh, 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 widowed, <laughs> I'm putting the pack right next to the mic. <laughs> uh, he was, uh, or she was uh, widowed um, in the uh, early 90s and then um, uh, was single for a long time and then met this guy. So, um, you know, he's all right guy and everything. There's nothing wrong with him. It's just we weren't particularly close to him. Uh, and uh, so we feel bad for her, of course, but uh, it's not, uh, I wouldn't say it was a, I don't know. There's no way, it's, it's tough to uh, to say like, well, didn't make me cry or something like that. Like you sound like a jerk, you know. I don't mean it that way. But you just um, we feel bad for her mom and um, uh, but uh, yep, that is what it is. So what are we doing here? All right, let's get this going here. Skiing, you know, Edwin. I saw the pictures, man, and that's um, I saw the pictures of you skiing in the mountains, and uh, if uh, you guys aren't a uh on the discord and you haven't seen the uh pictures uh it's like um i mean obviously i'm not dumb like i know there are different parts of the world <laughs> you know what i mean um but uh it's like looking at something in a movie it's um people out skiing and, and uh, you know out in the mountains and uh oklahoma is uh very 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 flat so uh um, there are a few mountains, uh, but they're, they're, uh, far away from me. There's a, a small, uh, mountain range called the Kayamichi Mountains in the Southeast Oklahoma, which, um, I was just talking online and I think I saw Jizzaboz pop in here. What's up, Mr. Boz? Uh, I was just talking to, um, Jizzaboz about, um, there's a new story floating around that Oklahoma is, uh, some doofus from <laughs> Oklahoma is proposing that they actually make a Bigfoot hunting season, um, which is stupid if you think about it. But the idea is that people will then buy a Bigfoot hunting license. Like when I saw that, that's the first thing I thought. I thought I would buy a Bigfoot hunting license, however much it is, and hang it on the wall and say, yep, I'm now licensed to hunt Bigfoot. I <laughs> so. It's just a, a money making kind of thing, but um, there's a, there are an actual awful lot. There's a different hot spots in the U.S. for Bigfoot hunting, and um, um, of course the uh, basically the whole West Coast. I mean, you've got Seattle, the mountains in um, Washington, down through Portland, and then of course through um, uh, Northern California, 
uh, all the way down to where the uh, famous uh, Roger Patterson film. Look at this. I can we can pick a random topic topic and I can uh, ramble about it. I mean, we go right to um, Bigfoot, <laughs> and I can talk about Bigfoot. Um, actually, when I was a kid, I was super into um, all the paranormal stuff. I was into UFOs, Bigfoot, Loch Ness Monster, you know, all that kind of stuff. And um, uh, I had a plan when I was a little kid that I wanted to go to all those places and see all those things or try to see all those things. Um, and um, on my uh, honeymoon... We went to the Bahamas. We took a, a short cruise to the Bahamas. It was like a four-hour cruise. And when I looked at a map, I realized that we were going right through what is considered to be the Bermuda Triangle. And so uh, I was super thrilled about that. I sat, went out on the deck and sat right on the front of the boat, just looking out there and stuff. So I've been to the Bermuda Triangle. And then when I moved up to Spokane, Washington, we went on vacation. Uh, Seattle was on the other side of the state, but spent time over in Seattle and went out in the the woods and everything and um so we were in bigfoot country and then also in uh, washington state is mount rainier mount rainier is a famous place because there was a man named kenneth arnold look at that off the top of my head kenneth arnold who in 1947 was uh near mount rainier and saw these uh Things flying through uh, the sky, which uh, were labeled as unidentified flying objects. But Kenneth Arnold, when he described them in his report, he said they almost looked like flying saucers. And so that is where the term flying saucers comes from, is Kenneth Arnold's report right there at Mount Rainier. So I went to Bermuda Triangle. I didn't see nothing there. I've been to the woods. I haven't seen Bigfoot. I went to Mount Rainier. I didn't see any UFOs. I also went to uh, the uh, UFO Museum in Roswell, New Mexico. I didn't see any UFOs there either. So the only thing that's left on my list is uh, uh, Loch Ness. That's right. That's absolutely right. It's Loch Ness. So someday I will get over there, and uh, I'm pretty sure my luck will change. <laughs> After everything else, I think um, I'll bet you that I run into uh, Nessie. You scuba dived in Loch Ness. Uh, Delta Lima says he scuba dived a few years ago on the way back home from some islands at the top of Scotland. The water was very brackish from peat and the surrounding mountains. And you could not see your hand in front of your face after diving a few feet. Yeah, that is... Um, uh, you know, I remember as a kid, they would show these specials and they would say, oh, they um, uh, went down and they took these cameras and locked out a Loch Ness and then they got pictures of nothing, you know, and then there would be like a thing and they go, is this Nessie's face? And it would be part of a, a log or something, but it's so foggy down in there that um, uh, you just you just can't see anything, you know. It's amazing that... Uh, you know, one of the things I literally thought about when I was a kid, well, not when I was a kid, but when cell phones came out, was um, if you figure up the ratio, i got one Scooby snack left, uh, of uh, just think of the number of uh, UFO footage that we have or Bigfoot sightings and all that. And you can think things have to fall in place. Like you got to be where Bigfoot is <laughs> to get his video. That's the first step, right? And um, you got to have a camera. Not everybody was just walking around with a camera, but now, literally, everybody has a camera in their pocket. And so, um, why uh, why we don't have 10 million Bigfoot uh, photos now, I don't know. All right. Uh, we've got the new layout. We've got this. Now, let's see what this volume looks like. What do you guys think? Is that high, low? Oh, I didn't mean to put my emissions in. This will not be a high score. I'm not putting all this in. Can you imagine a world in uh, today's world of PII and 
uh, you know, information and things like that that people would, I mean, not that I don't know that it could be uh, mined, but um, that people would put their initials and their birth date into an arcade game. <laughs> seems silly. Uh, I just watched a documentary. I believe it was called, yeah, Insert Coin. Hey, thanks, brother. Um, and Insert Coin uh, was... Um, no, I don't... Oh. Come on. All right, <laughs> we'll put the whole game in. There we go. Matchup: Pistons versus Mavericks. Yeah, I'm gonna drop that just a tad. Uh. Anyway, answer uh, answer coin if you haven't seen it. Oh, this is not good. I'm not recognizing this joystick. Why is that? Oh, there we go. Here's the tip. All right, I'm on the left. Oh, jumped instead of. Uh, so anyway, in uh, uh, insert coin. Oh, they uh, talked to the designer. One of the things he said was that uh, uh, the guy that designed it hated uh, the Chicago Bulls, and so the Chicago Bulls are actually uh, handicapped just a little bit in this game. Come on. There we go. This game, uh, this is the game that I learned the term rubber banding. Which, if you don't know what that means. Oh, come on. That's what I was trying to do, you dumb dumb. it back to me put up three terrible shot What's wrong with it? hit him from behind oh no uh, rubber banding is when uh, the CPU is down and then all of a sudden they just uh, you know you used to see it in, in uh, racing games God, I cannot shoot from the outside I'm coming back. I was gonna pass it to myself. Wait a minute. Oh, I'm dunk that. Uh, so you know the term uh, rubber banding. Yeah, I didn't mean to do that. I meant to pass it to myself. Yeah. Like I played this earlier as the, uh-oh, like that. <laughs> so rubber banding is a term that came from racing games where uh, it's almost like you're connected with a rubber band. So if you get way, way, way out and head, the uh, guy behind you comes and catches up. And so um, it's the same thing in this game. It's uh, This game is very, very, it's infamous, I would say, uh, <laughs> for being unfair. <laughs> Come on. Mavericks up by seven to Harper. Oh boy. He's gonna be on fire. Watch this. Pass it back to him. Shoot. Alright, here we go. Gotta get some points here. Whoa! That did not seem fair. That. Oh, I don't know how the pistons are doing these days. Hey Dave, what's up? Yeah, we're just uh, doing a little uh, 
Doing a little Saturday, I'm testing out the new uh, OBS layout here, and uh, that's a wide open shot. All right, 16-19. Come on, oh, <laughs> that's not nice. All right. Oh, oh, oh. Take him out. Take him out. Oh, he took me out. Oh, come on. Boom, oh, Juggalaga. All right. Right back. Oh, took me out. Jump, block, 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 block. He's wide open. Easy. 22, 27. Come on, block, block, block. Uh, watch. Uh, I can't believe he didn't make that. Uh, no, we are not on the mister yet. Although the mister is running right here behind me. I was playing Batman on the mister earlier. And then it paused. Uh, I just got my, uh, today from Amazon, got my uh, HDMI splitter. Don't shoot that. Thank you. Let's give it to the human here. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, I got through. Oh. That was on the ground. Oh boy. Alright. Oh, we'll take it. We'll take it. Finger roll right down the middle. Well, two on two. Oh, there we go. Oh, don't shoot it from there, you dumb dumb. Oh. Oh, we're shooting. I just forgot the ball. Take that. Come on, hit him. Oh, I didn't mean to hit it that far out. <laughs> oh, I forgot the ball. That's a good block, too. Oh, boy. I hate this game. Hit him with the knees. There we go. Oh. Uh. Full court pass. Oh, don't jump. Take it. Oh, that should have been a monster jam. Not a layup. I'm on fire! Oh, come on. Get the ball. Get the ball. Get it. Mm. Nice shot, Tubby. You don't say no good, huh? Hey, Dave, I don't know if you uh, saw my... Uh, by the way, I've got a bad habit of uh, when I see people whose names are David, I call them Dave. So I apologize if you go by David. Uh, wide World of Retro. I did some 3D printing. Oh, hold on. I'm on fire! Oh! God bless me. All right, let's go over here. Over here, he shoots! All right, downtown, 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 downtown. downtown. My uh, next door neighbor's name is uh, David, and uh, he's a really super, super nice guy. Why'd you pass it out to that guy? There we go. He's wide open. There we go. And uh, uh, anyway, I always call him uh, Dave. I say, hey, Dave. Wave at him when I'm out there. He's just a super, super nice guy. Oh, don't shoot it. I hit the wrong button. Oh, don't. Oh, I can't believe I went there. Now, look, it's tied 41 41. Now, watch how he starts shooting. Let's see that. 
And uh, anyway, yeah. One day uh, I said Dave, and then uh, uh, his wife said, "Oh, did you mean David?" <laughs> I felt bad. I don't know any bad Davids, to be honest with you. All right, let's take the ball, take it to the hoop, take it to the hoop. Oh, look at that, Isaiah Thomas. And now there's Isaiah Thomas Jr. He plays for uh, OU basketball. I saw him the other day. He cuts left. He cuts right. Watch this. I'm going to pass it over to that guy. You ready? Pass it back. Oh. I'm going to pass it back to me, not score. Come on, bro. I put the quarters in. Oh. Come on. Stolen. Oh, from behind the backboard. Oh, it still goes in. <laughs> That's one of those trick shots. All right. Come on. Right down the middle. There he goes. Oh, that was a beautiful shot. Come on. Watch. Oh, didn't even make it. Well, now I'm not going to show you because I lost by two points. <laughs> Just good. Uh, I 3D printed uh, this, which I found this on uh, Thingiverse. I, I was actually watching um, late night TV a couple nights ago, and I saw this thing. I want to say it was a frog, like frog brand or something like that. And um, they're selling these things that you insert into. Let me get my mask here. Actually, this is funny because my mask is also hanging on. I printed these um, shelf hooks. So this slides in over a shelf, and then you got a, a hook underneath. So that's how I've been uh, keeping my mask in here. So i got another one over here with about five masks. But uh, this is the one I've been using, uh, which if you see it, you'll see why. Because i got to go a little Mandalorian here. Uh, but what this is, is... Um, some of the masks I have, they're just pressed right up against your mouth. And so the idea, is that you just slide it in the mask and it just creates that little bubble right there where you could kind of breathe through there. Uh, and it's not just, it doesn't have that uh, claustrophobic kind of feel. Now, the problem with this very particular design is I need to scale it up or something because I think if I fall, I think these are going to go on my nose and rip my nostrils off. <laughs> I think it's just going to go. Psh. And also, um, whoever designed this, if you look at the part that goes up against your nose, they didn't round it or bevel it at all right there. So it's just kind of a, a sharp edge. So uh, when, it, when it's sitting right there, depending on where it sits, it kind of pushes up into your skin. So, and I could, it'd probably be easier to fix with a Dremel than it would be uh, with a sander, but, um, uh, or I mean with the change in the model or something like that, you know, so, uh, so the higher up this goes, it does seem to help with the glasses <laughs> and the mask. So, um, uh, so anyway, I tried this out on Friday. The only thing was I was just nervous. I mean, like what are the odds that you would trip and fall or walk into a wall? I mean, not good. Like most days I don't trip and fall, but I just thought if you do, man, there's a good chance that this could really kind of injure you or something. So, um, yeah, I, uh, uh, and I have a, uh, I have a hot air gun. I have one or a heat gun for, um, I bought it years ago for removing, um, actually for removing side art off of arcade cabinets. Um, and so, um, the, uh, hey squeaky, how you doing? Uh, so, uh, so I was just showing, uh, uh, wide world of retro. He is another uh, 3d printing guy. Uh, these um, 3D, you put these inside your mask and it kind of creates a little air bubble, you know. So I also saw um, another one on Thingiverse that it's a complete circle and then there's kind of a bridge so it goes over your nose. But I got a honker, man, so I don't, <laughs> I don't know that an average one will go over my nose. Uh, again, you know, it's real easy to to um, scale things up in 3D printing. And so, um, and this is funny, by the way, I just tweeted this out, but uh, I will show you live right here. My wife, um, earlier she came in and she was like, you know, with the, the mask things and stuff, there are just so many things that could be 
3D printed that could really help society. And she goes, what are you printing? I'll show you. <clears throat> so uh, if you are one of my Patreon uh, supporters, you know that I release a video uh, every Sunday of something that's random in my room. And uh, maybe I will talk about this. Uh, but I have uh, a lot of skulls and head busts and things like that. And it's not really a, a, by design. It's just if you're into Halloween stuff and goofy stuff, you end up with a lot of these things. But um, uh, anyway, this is Flavel, <laughs> which is a – I have the rest of his head. The rest of his head's up on the shelf. Uh, but it is a um, – this is one of those goofy things that they have in the doctor's office that show you like medication and stuff and, and his brain comes out. Well, now, now we're going to see how his brain goes back in. Sorry, Flavel. Oh boy. Well, now I'm going to do this on the air. What's your stupid brain stem? There he goes. Uh, so anyway, uh, the, um, the thing is, when we looked at it, when I glanced at it, I thought it was Flavel, but it's not. It's E-Lavel. You can see the, the brand name is E-Lavel, but when I glanced at it, I thought it was Flavel. So we've just nicknamed him Flavel. Um, but um, my wife came in and she's like, oh, you know, all these things that you print, you know, it could really help people. What are you printing? Well, I printed a sombrero <laughs> for Flavel. So now Flavel has a little hat. <laughs> So there you go. That's uh, all right, Flavel. You're going over there. That's uh, what I do to help humanity. <laughs> Put in a sombrero for a guy with an exposed brain. I, like I said, I do have the other half of his head up there. But uh... all right, let's get this. Some more credits here. Full game purchase. All right, didn't do so good with Detroit. I do not need my initials in. It turns out. Man, I'm a Chicago. I mean, I'm not from Chicago. My dad's whole family's from Chicago. And I uh, just spent my whole life watching the Bulls. Of course, there's not going to be. I could be the Seattle Supersonics since I'm in Oklahoma City. And we. Uh, oh, I don't want to get into that mess. But we have the Oklahoma City Thunder. But we got uh, the karma. Basketball karma got us good. Oh, still it. Come on, Pip. Oh, you're from Chicago? I didn't know that, dude. My, uh... <laughs> oh, he's down. Nobody around. Shoot. Oh! oh. Give me a break, guys. Pass it. My, um... Entire family, my dad's entire family, uh, lives on the uh, south side of Chicago. I mean, it's not technically Chicago. They're way far south side. Uh, so they are um, Homewood. And, uh, oh, look, there's nobody around. Come on, Pip. Uh, Homewood, Hazelcrest. Um, they're, they're even past... Uh, uh, usually when we go, oh, hey, thank you for the follow. I changed all my uh, default OBS stuff. I'm, I'm just slowly, oh, come on. As you can see it's helping me. Uh, put it up. God, Pippin. All-star. <laughs> oh, boy. 195th on the south side, so my grandma lives off of uh, 183rd and Dixie Highway. Uh, so, uh, yep, I know right where that's at. Um, so I would say uh, pretty much every year of my life, uh, except for the last couple years, uh, oh, come on, come on, get the ball. Uh, we have gone to Chicago on vacation. I mean, that's why I've probably been there 40 or 50 times. Yes! Drops it at the buzzer. Um, so yeah, my grandma lives right on the uh, intersection of, uh, 183rd and Dixie Highway. Uh, my, uh, that's in, um, 
home wood. There's a bank. There's a uh, caribou coffee right there. Um, and then uh, my uncle lived in um, Hazelcrest. And uh, my other aunt lived with my grandma. They had this old school two-story house. And um, uh, so my aunt and uncle lived upstairs. Um, oh, no. Boom shakalaka. All right, let's run it down here. Come on, I was... All right, let's pass it to Horace Grant. Good job, Horace. You had one job. All right, <laughs> that worked. I acted like I was asleep down there. We're double teaming that guy. Nobody there. All right. So, uh, I've been to Chicago a million times. I, you know, it's funny. Uh, Chicago, everybody says Chicago pizza, and then they always say, um, oh, why was he shooting from there? Giordano's, you know, which is like super, um, of course, deep dish Chicago pizza, which was not the kind of pizza that I grew up eating. Uh, and going to Chicago, they always had, uh, you know, the, the thin crust, like, my dad would always order like double sausage, sausage and onion, like that kind of stuff. All right, there's nobody around, Pip. Thank you. We are down, buddy. Come on, Pippin. Bring in Jordan. Oh, we don't get Jordan. Jordan is not a licensed character, I don't believe. All right, that's pretty far out, but wide open. Yeah, that's a little too far out. <laughs> Boom. Come on. Oh, boy. All right, there's nobody around. A layup over the shoulder. In the uh, Insert Coin documentary, uh, they interview the guy who's the announcer for this game. And uh, he says one of the things he used to do is uh, go into arcades and, like, walk up behind people and uh, say things like, You're on fire! And then people would be looking at the game and stuff and... He said this kid one time turned around and was like, you sound just like the guy in the game. He's like, I am the guy in the game. <laughs> so um, I think uh, Insert Coin is on uh, Amazon streaming if you haven't seen it. It covers uh, basically the midway era of the uh, late, uh, mid, mid to late 90s. Um, I mean, this guy took his job seriously, the announcer guy. <laughs> he was very serious about his job. Uh but uh, they cover uh, Mortal Kombat. They cover um, Smash TV. Um, I think uh, Leagueful Enforcers. Uh, so it's a pretty good, pretty good little documentary if you like that era of uh, of arcade games. Boom! <laughs> All right, what do we got here? Twenty-one, twenty-four. See, it's a close game. All right. All right. Watch this. Head fake. Pass. Underneath. <laughs> All right, let's get the ball. Nope, no, block it, block it. All right, rejected. Pass it. No, don't shoot it. Why would you do that? Horse Grant, you're fired from the bulls. 23 26. Can Pippin hit a three from out here if he's wide open? Oh, tie game 26 all. Which now in the NBA is like the first quarter. <laughs> 20, 26 up. Get the ball. Come on. Block, block, block. Block, block, block. Get the ball. Mm. Yeah, no kidding. He's up by two. It's the ball. Stop the game. We're winning. Stop. Oh no, look at that, oh, Buster Jam up by four! Woo, third corner, come on now! Oh god, no, 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 block, 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 block. That's gold tinny, but who cares? Not in this game, it ain't. Oh. Of course. Alright, get down there. 
Right, right down the middle. There you go. There you go. Oh. <laughs> Puts up a brick, but it's good. Oh. Uh, you see that? Rubber banding. <laughs> That'll calm my nerves with some Kool Aid. Well, crystal light. <laughs> The uh, right near my my grandma's house, uh, I say right near, you know, within a, a couple blocks, there was a place called the uh, Oasis Beef Hut, <laughs> which that's the kind of place you could have in Chicago, and it has this uh, picture of a koala on the sign, all blocked. Oh, one guy, yeah, one guy gets blocked, the other guy gets knocked down. Okay, we're gonna pass it. Underneath, all right. And we used to, uh, we used to actually walk to the beef hut, We'd go over there and get four Italian beef sandwiches dipped. So good, man. So good. So bad for you, but so good. When we would um, go to Chicago. Look at that. Kicks it out. Wasn't a terrible shot. It's a three open three point guy. Mm, nice pivot. Come on, get the ball. One minute to go. Wide open shot. Hey Aaron, how you doing, big man? We're uh oh talking telling Chicago stories at the moment and oh Pippin it goes in oh it's stolen oh son of a I just punched that guy. Come on! Nobody else on the court, it's just me and you. All you guys are laying down. Drinking and eating pizza, man. That is the life on a Saturday. We just had, um, we were just talking about Chicago pizza. And uh, I shouldn't even talk about pizza in the same sentence because I, oh, I broke the backboard. Oh, am I that far behind? 41 48 final. Oh, that's crap. All right. Does anybody have a team they want me to be? Let's see. Let's see if the there's no West Virginia NBA team. Who's down in there? I guess Celtics. Oh, that's Boston. I don't know how far that away is. Uh, this is not on the Mister. Not yet. I just got a HDMI splitter today. Uh. So, um, oh, wait a minute. Did I see Mr. Aaron wearing a San Antonio Spurs shirt last night? Spurs. Spurs were, were the team for a while. Let's see who we got on the Lakers. <laughs> Vladdy Divac. <laughs> were they? I was like, I want to be, I want to be Divac. <laughs> You know, I, I um, I've loved basketball. Um, I don't know. Ever since I was a little kid, uh, I remember uh, watching a game one time um, with my dad, and just not, you know, really understanding. Uh... Oh, that's a nice start. Oh, hit the wrong button. <laughs> Turns out Vladi Divac can't hit an eighty-foot <laughs> shot. <laughs> All right, let's try that again. There we go. All right, we'll be the Celtics next. Um, oh, boy. And so uh, I just remember watching basketball and just being like, oh, it's just guys running around and passing and shooting. And then um, had a... Uh, 
had somebody like, well, my dad, you know, like sat down and showed me like, like, no, this is um, pick and roll. This is uh, defense. This is offense. This is, you know, this is the one man. This is the two. <laughs> just everything just explained the whole thing to me. And ever since then, like, it just made so much more sense. You know what I mean? Like, like once you understand the, uh, the intricacies of what's going on, I just got hooked, you know? And then, um, I was right at the age where, uh, I graduated in, uh, 91. Uh, so I was just right at the age where, well, let me back up for a little bit. Uh, Oklahoma does not, or did not have, uh, I tried to get that. 12 to 5. Come on, Flotty. This might have been a bad choice. All right. Uh, before the uh, before the arrival of the Oklahoma City Thunder, uh, Oklahoma did not have any uh, professional sports teams. <laughs> They're just saying airball. I thought that was a good shot. Not for him, I guess. All right. And um, so, uh, you know, as a kid, all I had was Chicago, you know, because that was where my dad's family was from and stuff. And so um, at a very early age, I started getting Chicago Bears stuff, you know. I mean, and this was like 1979, 1980. Like, I remember I have all these pictures. I'm in first grade with a, a Bears. Remember those, like, puffy vests, you know, like a winter vest? Like, I didn't even understand why somebody would own that in Oklahoma. <laughs> But, um, come on, pass it. Oh, ridiculous. All right. And so, um, anyway, uh, so I, I, you know, I wore bear stuff and then, uh, you know, the, the bears started getting good. And of course it didn't matter if the bears were good anyway, right? Like you'd go to Chicago and everybody's just like, you know. The Bears and all that, you know. Uh, it didn't matter if they were good. You'd go watch a game or go tailgate or do whatever. And then, uh, you know, Bears started getting good. Kick it out. Kick it back. Wide open. There you go. Good job, Vladdy. <laughs> Just punch it. Punch it. Come on, get the ball. Put it in. Wasn't a terrible shot. All right, we'll do a little alley-oop. Down by three. That's what I said. All right. I thought that was a three. Can't argue with the game. So then, uh, you know, the the uh, uh, Bears started getting good, right? Okay, so. And uh, then that kind of culminated with uh, the uh, 85 Bears. The shuffling crew and uh, hey, Joss, this is uh, the arcade version of uh, NBA Jam. We're playing a little mame, and really the the uh, main point of today's stream is uh, oh, nice pass there, you Dorco. Is uh, I was trying out the, my new layout over here on, on OBS. I've been inspired by Aaron, uh, who. Uh, Downplays his uh, artistic skills, but uh, uh, his streams look great and mine look like dookie. So I was, uh, come on, three seconds, two, one, put it up. <laughs> you can't, the buzzer got the shot off. It's not in his hand right there. That's a good shot. So, uh, you know, all of a sudden I was on top of the world, like, and then, like what everything else had, like, you know, everybody else. Um, like, you know, when Dallas Cowboys were big, um, yeah, this is OBS. And so, uh, uh, you know, like all my friends, like when the Cowboys were winning, when the Redskins were winning, they were all Redskins fan. And when the Cowboys were winning, they were all Cowboys fans, you know? And, uh, here I was with just this, this lone kid in Oklahoma wearing bear stuff. And then all of a sudden here come the 85 bears, Super Bowl shuffle. Well, I'm Mick Mantle. I'm Samurai Mike. I stop him cold. Part of the defense. Big and bold. 
<laughs> Give me a chance and I'll rock you good. Probably gonna get a copyright strike. I sound just like Samurai Mike. And, uh, I'm the funky QB known as McMahon. I hit the turf like no one can. <laughs> McMahon, what a doof. And then, uh, God, I'm still behind. Come on, we got some catch up to do, boys. Block, block. That's not block. Alright, alright, look at that. That guy's wide open. Take it back. Alright. Now we need to stop. That's not a stop. That's a clear path. <laughs> oh, 360 Mega Jam! Come on, D-Box! It's funny that when you think of the Lakers, I mean, even in an arcade game, like you go, oh, the Lakers, oh, I want to be the Lakers. Who is that? Well, it's bloody d and <laughs> this guy, you know what I mean? Like, ah, oh, boy. Let's see if I'm on fire. Bounces off the rim, we'll take it. Ah, I hit him right in the back. All right, there we go. Hit me. Hit me. Hit me. Come on. Easy jam. So, yeah, then I was a, you know, I was a little Bears kid, and then uh, we had our moment in the sun, and then uh, throw it up. <laughs> That's ridiculous. That should not go. Oh, that's only the third quarter, too. Um, and then everything went away, right? Then the next year, like, it was like a year or two later, Walter Payton retired and the fridge got too fat and <laughs> started being a boxer or whatever he was doing. I mean, just thought, you know, that team just broke up. Flutie McCutie, as my uh, aunt used to call him, Doug Flutie and Tom Zach, just all those guys. There's a great, um, if you, even if you're not a sports guy, uh, ESPN has their 30 by 30 series, 30 by 30, and they have a um, uh, an episode about the uh, 85 Bears, and it's it's just amazing. Of course, there's, uh, you know, gotta have Ditka, Mr. Ditka. All right. See, when you miss a layup like that, like, how can you come back? So anyway, then I was just a little chump kid that liked, you know, support. Oh, there we go. <laughs> that was really a pass. Yeah, McMahon. Uh, 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 you know, he's one of those guys that. Uh, uh, People like to hit him. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like he could make him mad. Uh, you know, he could talk stuff or whatever, but eventually got settled on the court. Yeah, that was stupid. Yeah, there ain't no coming back from this one, I'm afraid. Yeah. I didn't mean to do that. Too much time off the clock. So then fast forward, um, you know, early 90s, all of a sudden, uh, there's this uh, team called the Chicago Bulls. And, um, you know, I mean, the Bears weren't doing anything. So then the, uh, yeah, and then the um, the Bulls start, uh, uh, they get this little guy named Michael Jordan. Come on, put it up. Oh, I would have tied the stupid game. All right. So uh, then, of course, the whole world became Bulls fans, right? And then you had to be, then it was cool to be a Bulls hater, you know? So uh, none of that bothered me. I'm, I've never been a fair weather uh, fan, you know? But then, if you want to talk basketball, in um, 2000. I want to say it was 2004. It might have been 2005. I think it's 2004, though. And 2004 was uh, Hurricane Katrina. Is that right? 
And um, I, I think this is 2003. Um, so you got Hurricane Katrina and um, New Orleans was uh, devastated and it was very awful. It was terrible. And they uh, were using uh, the event center there to house people that were that had lost their homes and it was really bad. And so the um, Hornets, New Orleans Hornets at the time, uh, relocated to Oklahoma City. Now, this was kind of a, a one-two uh, attempt. <laughs> Number one, uh, it kept their franchise going, right? Because sports franchises are very expensive to keep going. Uh, but uh, Oklahoma City wanted to show the world that it could support an NBA franchise. So the New Orleans Hornets moved temporarily to Oklahoma City. We had just built a brand new giant convention center and that became they became for two years the Oklahoma City Hornets. And um, they uh, drafted Chris Paul. they they had draft I think I can't remember if uh, Kevin Durant ever played in uh, C- uh, oh well we're not to the Kevin Durant stage yet. Um, we had, um, what was that dude? The Birdman, Chris Anderson, that ended up going to, um, Denver. So they got all these people and it was a ragtag thing and, uh, they were terrible. The first year, I don't even remember. I think we won like 10 games or less. It was really, really terrible. But for Oklahoma city, we didn't care because we had never had professional sports and, um, the uh, convention center has three layers. There's the ground level, there's the medium level, and then there's the super high seats, which is called Loud City, where people just sit up there and scream the entire game. And tickets for Loud City uh, in the corners, which aren't the best seats, are five dollars, and on the sides and on uh, where you know where you can really see better are ten dollars. So you could go to an NBA game every day or not every day but every game for five or ten dollars and so it's sold out all the time the the convention center holds thirty three thousand people and it was selling out every time so it was an amazing thing for the city and for the sport uh it showed that oklahoma city could carry an nba team right it gave money to new orleans whatever i mean so this this was a, a perfect situation right uh, and then, so we did, we had, uh, the new Orleans Hornets. They were the Oklahoma city Hornets for two years. And I'm looking over my shoulder. It's in the other room, but I have, uh, my yellow baseball cap that I wear quite a bit says Oklahoma city Hornets. Uh, and the Oklahoma city Hornet stuff is pretty rare because they were only around for two years. Uh, one time my wife and I walked into Seven Eleven, and uh, this guy saw my hat and he goes, uh, is that Oklahoma City Hornet hat? And I said, yeah, it says OKC Hornets. And I said, yeah, and he goes, he goes, I'll give you $100 for it right now. And this is the 7-Eleven clerk. And I go, $100? I go, this hat's filthy, you know? And then he's like, yeah, but you can't get them <laughs> because they're, they're, they don't make them. And I almost did it. And then it was something about what he said, the, you know, when he's like, oh, you can't get them. I was like, nah, I better keep this one. So so I still have it. I wear it all the time. Someday I'll wear it out and I'll, I'll retire and hang it up. But anyway. I'm going to play one more game here. Who'd you say, Aaron? You wanted, um, I know you wanted LA. Um, oh, and Celtics. All right. Squeaky said the Celtics. Uh, how many? Let's put in a zillion quarters. All right. And so, um, anyway, what ended up happening, Celtics should be East Coast. Uh, oh, LA Clippers. There, oh, I was looking, looking at the wrong spot. There. Uh, so what happened was then Oklahoma City kind of made a play to keep the Hornets, which wasn't a great thing to do. It felt kind of icky. And Charles Barkley on national television called out Oklahoma and was like, why would you do this? You know, because the thing was, it was time for them to go home, you know, and and they needed their town needed the income. And uh, oh, there we go. Let's put it up. Look at that tall guy. Put that in the basket, ding dong. Get that ball. Okay, that first of all is not a layup. Okay, that's no way he would have blocked that. Isaiah, isn't he still tired from the game earlier? Come on. Okay, I guess I can't shoot over that guy. 
good. Seventies Globetrotters. <laughs> I've never seen the Globetrotters. Uh, I had a friend uh, that went and saw the Globetrotters when I was a kid, and he got a um, like a souvenir ball, you know. But I think anybody that paid the money got a ball. Like I, I think um, uh, <laughs> it wasn't like he got a game ball. You know what I mean? All right, put that up there. So, uh, so anyway, um, we could not steal the New Orleans Hornets. So instead, we stole the Seattle Supersonics. <laughs> and, uh, I mean, if you think that um, uh, Seattle people aren't mad to this day, go, uh, go ask them what they think of Oklahoma City. When uh, my son and I, we went on a cruise to, um, oh. Oh, hey, thank you for the follow, sir. That's uh, Mr. Moon Pie, by the way, dancing. I gotta put some more different. Uh, I don't know if I'm gonna get Twitch dinged or whatever for using a cloak and dagger sounds. I probably shouldn't use those, but we'll see how it plays out. Oh, look at that! Oh, come on, come on. Uh, so yeah, my, uh, my buddy Andy, he saw the Globetrotters and it, he had this ball and I, for when I was a kid, I was like, you got the Globetrotters ball? Like, how are they going to play next week? You took the ball. But then it turned out, you know, 10,000 people got a Globetrotter ball. <laughs> Everybody that had 1995 got a Globetrotter ball. All right, watch this. We're going to do my play. We're going to run back. We're going to kick it across. Oh, I can't kick it across court when the guy's sitting there on his butt. Block it, block it, block it. Mm. Don't shoot from there. Hit. I'm going to kill Isaiah Thomas. Kill, kill, kill. <laughs> Unfortunately, there's no kill button. There's just a block him in the knee button. I need to do head fakes on that guy. I'll try some head fakes. If you hit the, uh, if you just tap the, uh, okay, pass it. So watch this. Head fake. Now shoot. Well, I faked the one guy, then fake the other one. Hey, it's Mr. Pinback. Pinback. Pinback is uh, not only my uh, Twitch stream uh, flavor flave. My right hand man, uh, the man behind the scenes, uh, the number two on my uh, two man basketball team, but he's also my uh, poker advisor. <laughs> and so I, he's got me into playing online poker. Come on, pass it out, pass it out. Nobody in the round, it's a wide open three. Now I'm only down by six. Good lord. Could somebody do a little Tanya Harding here and take out Isaiah Thomas's knee maybe during the halftime? <laughs> That'd be nice. Appreciate that. Jump, block. Jump, block. Another. And by the way, um, speaking of Scooby Doo, oh. Did I throw all my trash away? I was eating Scooby Snacks earlier. And um, if you look closely, you're in first place with 115 bits. There is a tie between everybody else in the universe for a second with zero. That is true. We've, we've not, uh, Pinback is trying to get me into the bit, or the bit game. Oh, geez. All right, that's way out. That's too far out. Hit him, hit him, hit him. In. Would you please put that in the basket? <sighs> you know, nobody's going to pay us bits with this kind of basketball game. <laughs> I'm shot the ball. Okay. Run. Shoot. That's what you got to do. Boom shakalaka. We need more boom. 
and less shakalaka. We could also use my other guy on the other end of the court. That'd be nice. Alright, let's try that again. There. Boom, shakalaka. Karaga got her knee whacked in January 94. You know, I'm, uh, uh, I watch, I'm, uh, what is it? Is it on Comedy Central or I don't know what uh, channel it's on, but it's like the world's dumbest whoever, the world's dumbest this, world's dumbest criminals, world's dumbest whatever. And, uh, you know, I don't know. I honestly don't know what, uh, Nancy Kerrigan is doing these days. Uh, but you know what? She's not on a reality show making fun of news clips. Oh, why would you pass it back? Wrong button. Yeah, I should have head faked that. Oh boy. Block it, block it, block it. 2432. This is not going well. Watch this. Head fake. It was not an ugly shot. It went in. Hit him, hit him, hit him. Ugh. Hey, second place goes to Joss. You know, did that play a sound? I think this I've got the sound so freaking loud on uh, NBA Jam that I'm not uh I can't hear anything else. Look at that shot. <laughs> of course, it's good. It's good. Why? Why me? That was the only thing about that that I uh made me not feel bad for Nancy Kerrigan when she just laid it. And I get it. I mean, what a terrible... Um, oh, is the game still going? It is still going. I already gave up. I don't know why I'm still playing. Alright. Let's get the ball. We're going to make a comeback. Watch this. <laughs> okay. There's easy two. Alright, what do we got? 32-37. Get the ball. All right. There's two. Down by three. The Celtics. Whoever picked the Celtics. It's a good choice. Oh, don't run down without the ball. Get the ball. Pass it. Two. Oh, I'm on fire. Look at that. All right. Now let's get the ball again. Uh-oh. Oh, uh, rejected. All right. Oh, my gosh. Look at this. Oh, it was on fire. Come on. Oh, it's on fire. I'm up by one. Run, run, run. Oh. Get him. Ah. <laughs> uh. <laughs> up by three up by three this is the game boys oh no 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 up by one that's what I meant look how fast he's running now <laughs> up by three. Oh no boy <laughs> Maintaining that three-point lead. Watch this. He will hit one from half court right before the end. I gotta get got to get further ahead than that. Back, forward, back, pass it, shoot it. Two point. Pistons win the game, in case you didn't hear. Jerk. <sighs> you got to be up by more than three. I'll take you every time. All right, I'm going one more. What do we got here? Uh, okay, let's find a different team here. Let's see. Well, I want to see who we got here. Uh, all right. Golden State. Hardaway. Manning, where are they, Devon? Barkley, 
want to be Barkley. Clyde Drexler. Oh, I forgot about Kemp. Tisdale. Oh, wait, who's in Utah? Malone and Stockton. Oh, my gosh. That's a flashback. The Mailman and John Stockton. And remember, who was the third guy? Um, guy, I can't think of his name now. Jeff. The guy that would do this every time he shot the free throw. He's saying hi to his mom. Get that out of here. Ain't got time for that in the NBA. John Stockton from Gonzaga University, Spokane, Washington. And every time when I was in Spokane, you would drive by and people would go, yeah, do you know John Stockton's from here? I do, because that's literally one of the only three things you people say every time. <laughs> it's not fair. But Wow, look at John Stockton. He's like a little tiny guy. All right, John. John is a three-point shooter. One of the greatest three-point shooters of all time. And let's see if it works out. Boom. There we go. I don't necessarily like him. Lottie Divac punching him in the face. I see the head fake is my future. I think that's my move now. The bad news is, I don't think John Stockton is going to be. Uh, I don't think he's going to be blocking any shots. He says worthy, but I thought he said the worm. I was like, oh, Dennis Rodman in this game, that would be great. I sure did like living in uh, Spokane, Washington. Of course, it was. Um, uh, the cool thing was about Spokane, one of the many cool things was it was, um, uh, I moved there in 96 and was there for a year and a half. And so by 96, uh, as you know, grunge music hit in, uh, 1991. Get the ball. That's your shot. That's your range, J-Boy. Okay, that's a little outside the range. That's a little far. Okay, I think I might have knocked my own guy out. That's not a terrible shot. Oh, there you go. There's a good three. Oh, he didn't make it. <laughs> um, so, the thing about Spokane, um, when I moved there, was grunge hit in 91. And so, um, you know, by 91, 92, uh, even 93, you had Pearl Jam. Uh, you had... Uh, Alice in Change, you had Soundgarden, you had, um, uh, I don't even want to say Mud Honey because our mother love bone. It's going to make me cry, but, um, so you had all these, uh, uh, grunge bands and then, so everybody in the music industry was like, okay, don't just drop the ball. Like when I give you the ball, don't just throw it away. Oh my God, Carl Malone. Carl Malone can never make a shot that far away in a million years. All right, John, here we go. Let's do the old head fake trick. Okay, well, the problem is he's going to be on fire here in a minute. Okay, let's pass it to the Malone. Take it down. Don't shoot it from there. Gosh darn it. So basically, uh, by the time I got to Spokane, uh, every band in the um, northwest fourth of the United States thought they were going to go to um, Seattle and make it as a musician. All right, there's the mailman delivering the mail. Oh, package for you. So uh, there was kind of this uh, uh, little triangle. There was... Uh, uh, 
Seattle, you know, uh, to the west. Come on. Don't shoot it. All right, shoot it. <laughs> shoot that shot. I dig it back, man, man. And so, uh, why does it say ugly shot? That's a great shot. And uh, if anybody is aspiring to play basketball, you should take notes because that was such a good shot. <laughs> Look at that. 0.5 on the clock. Just enough for him to make a three-pointer. All right. Uh, so the thing was is that all these bands moved up to the Northwest because they were going to be the next big grunge band. And uh, so you had Seattle up in the corner. You had Portland over here. You had um, Boise. And so you kind of had this little triangle of cities where bands were touring and they would all stop at Spokane to play small shows. I saw a million bands. We would go out every night and go to the club. There was like two or three clubs. Um and we would go every night. And, of course, there would be a local band opening up for them. But, uh, you know, that was, uh, if you listen to the, uh, what are you doing, Ding Dong? I guess I'll just let Malone take over. Good job, Stockton. I need less boom and less shakalaka from you, Ding Dong. All right, nobody's falling for the head fake anymore. I gotta do nine head fakes. Mm. Wow, that was a rejection. Oh, one out of two ain't bad. Uh, so you know, if you listen to the um, you don't know Flack episode where I talked about, uh, oh, that was a. I didn't mean to shoot that. Where I talked about doing the music magazine, once uh, I was known at these clubs uh, for doing the music magazine, I could get into clubs for free. I would just walk in and say, hey, I'm reviewing the bands tonight. And they would go, okay, let me in. Of course, I'd pay for a beer or whatever. And, uh, so, I mean, it was just so much music, you know. We were playing this on the NES. Yeah, I, I uh, my slam dunk game is uh, not good, especially not with John Stockton. Or the mailman, apparently. Or anybody. <laughs> when, it's not until you start getting on fire, and then all of a sudden you start throwing them down. Stockton's right here, buddy. Head fake. <laughs> Head fake. Not a brick. Not for John Stockton. We're down by two. Block it. Mm. I didn't want to do a layup finger roll. Down by two. Oh. All right. The Mega Drive version of this is not bad. Now, I was just at uh, Sam's Club the other day, and I saw the... Um, is it at games that puts these out the little miniature uh, one-up cabinets or whatever um and i saw the uh, nba jam one and i want to save 4.99 which um you have to really like this game actually that's one of the reasons when i saw that it made me think like man i haven't played that game in a long time all right Stockton down. Head fake. <laughs> Ooh, up by one. So the goal is to be up by more than three at the end of the fourth. Mailman puts it home. Look at that dish. Y'all thought I was going to shoot a three. All right. All right, Stockton. Uh-oh. 
He is heating up. Every <laughs> the whole team is on the ground, and I missed a ball. That is a jump and shoot mid-range jumper. John Stockton could hit those all day long, except in this game. Down by one, fourth quarter. Head fake. Okay, he's down. Right over the top, up by two. Less than a minute to go. Tie game, 48 all. Watch this, back to the mailman, back to Stockton, head fake. Puts it in. Three point. It's a jam, but it's only two points. Head fake. Pass. Pass it back. Head fake. Puts it in. Oh, come on, come on. <laughs> that sucks. Oh, boy. <laughs> Down by one. All right, 2.8 seconds left. <laughs> oh boy, I give up. Let me see if I missed anything in the chat. Um, time flies, Kerrigan is 51. Uh, you know what's amazing? Not that Nancy Kerrigan's 51, but the fact that... Um, uh, that I'm 47, so that she was in the Olympics, and she was four years older than me. So I wonder what what was I doing? I wasn't doing anything. I was playing NBA Jam. Um, I did not see uh, Delta Roy's question here, which is uh, what was the first PC game I ever played? Um, I mean, you gotta. I mean, how far do you want to go back? Uh, and by PC, do you literally mean IBM PC? Because the first computer we had was a TRS-80 Model 3 uh, that we personally owned. And um, so um, I remember, um, I mean, Text Adventures is like the really the first thing I remember. You know what I mean? Hey, you know what we're going to wrap up with tonight is, um, you know how I, I've been uh, wrapping up my my uh, shows with uh, some show and tell. And uh, I think I've got something. Uh, I know that, um, I know Aaron will love it. Um, I know that some of you guys will love it. Let's go to the boards here. Um, so then uh, after the TRS-80, uh, we got an Apple II. Um, I wonder what the first Apple game I ever played was. Probably something like Oregon Trail or something at school. But, I mean, we got an Apple in 82, so we got an Apple pretty early on. Um, okay, arcade. Here we go. Let's see. All right, we're going to pick. I'm gonna, We're going to... The first person to answer is the one we're going to go with. I'm going to give you two, three, four, five. Somebody pick a number between one and six. And it's number five. David picks it. And then four. So you know what? We might do two. We're going to do number six first. And number six, there's not that many in here. These are pictures from an arcade auction in Oklahoma City. This auction took place on May 20th, 2006. So if you've never been to an arcade auction, you're going to see what that looks like. Um... This is a boy. I jacked up my whole thing. I had this all laid out, so pretend like that fits in that window. <laughs> I have to fix that later. Uh, let's see what we got here. We'll have to. Um, these are coin changers, and I bought one of those. Uh, I never used it. I never did anything with it uh, in my home arcade. I put it in between two machines, and I thought it was cool looking. I think I paid. 
twenty dollars. And by the way, those things are freaking heavy. I don't know what's in the bottom of that thing, but it was uh, uh, made to not tip over, you know. So, um, I mean, it was probably as heavy, I want to say, as some of my arcade cabinets. Um, so these arcade auctions were often held in um, warehouses, buildings, uh, anywhere they could go. Um, yeah, that's true. Yeah, it's made so you could just haul it off. Um I want to say that this one, uh, I don't know. We'll see as the pictures go on, if I remember anything about it. I want to see if I can make these bigger but and still scroll through them. Uh, when I first started going to arcade auctions, I would write down the sale prices. And I had a big spreadsheet and I would write down, you know, Joust went for a hundred dollars, and Miss Pac-Man went for two hundred dollars, and and whatever, you know. No, I can't keep scrolling um, uh, when I do that. I can only go to the next picture uh, when I have them shrunk. So can I do that? Yeah. All right, we'll do it that way. Look at that dig dug centipede. This was uh, so Aaron remembers this era. This was um, uh, the era of. Arcade games are worthless. And this is actually, uh, you know, towards the end of that. This is 2006. Um, but I was, um, you know, keeping track of all these sales things. Well, around this time, uh, I started to make friends with these people, uh, you know, the local guys that fixed and bought and sold arcade games. And what I noticed was that they were the ones that were buying all the games. And most of the time... I would hang back and talk to them and, and there was no reserve on these games and they were buying their own games. So, um, uh, you know, if a Miss Pac-Man went for $100, it was because nobody bid on it and the guy who was selling it was just buying it back. And uh, that's kind of how they did reserves at a lot of these auctions. So, super shady. Um, oh, I see some good games coming up in this uh, uh auction here now that one on the right is obviously a, a multi-cade uh that somebody had brought uh and those things were going for more than the classics which is not uh, the case uh today mania challenge look at that bad boy i should uh, don't see that many of those i should have bought that I bet it went for nothing, too. Nibbler, if you haven't seen, um, oh, you had that PCB, um, the uh, Nibbler documentary about the guy who was uh, uh, going for the uh, Nibbler high score. That was a fun little documentary. It's kind of sad. And didn't that guy pass away? I, I think he might have passed away. I don't remember. Uh, here you go. Could have put this right in the living room. Put the TV at the other end. Big sit-down stun runner. That would have been nice to own. A good cabinet. There is a, a sit-down stun runner at the uh, Arcadia Retrocade. The arcade that's over in Fayetteville, Arkansas that I uh, try to go to as much as I can. Here we got a, uh, a Pingo in the middle there. There's a uh, magic sword on the right. I don't know what that is on the left there. Um, Aaron, I thought it was interesting. Aaron, uh, he and his brother both collect arcade games, and he said that his brother collected uh, redemption stuff. And I don't know anybody that collected redemption stuff. Uh, oh, pin back if you're still awake. Look at that, baby. I will buy that for you. I would... Says, always keep your gun loaded. Oh, no. I, well, I didn't add the... Uh, I, I missed what that was. Somebody tell me what that was. Whatever you did, because... Um, I guess... Uh, you know what I did is I put the uh, alert box below <laughs> everything else. Because I'm dumb. Let's put the alert box up there at the top so that doesn't happen again. Sorry about that. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, the thing about the only reason I would think people would do redemption stuff is because, uh, uh, I mean, would play it was because you, you would 
get redemptions. Here's one. Astanix. Not uh not a not one that I play. But uh so I don't know what for being at home, I don't know what the appeal for redemption was. But again, your brother is what, like seven or eight years younger than uh than you and I. So I mean it's a different era. And like my kids, their whole idea of a uh uh oh look at that cocktail. What is this? It's Atari. Is that oh it's missile command. I see the uh, trackball there. Um Collecting any of this stuff is crazy. There's a nice... Oh, now look at that. This is uh, something you definitely didn't see. Uh, this is the Battletoads, but it's one of those uh, the Super Nintendo um, conversion ones where you put the stuff in there. Yeah. These... Uh, I should have bought this. I, I got so many re regret, Not regrets, like real regrets. This is one of my favorite games, World Rally. I love this game. Uh, the uh, What's it called? The... 1,000 miles or whatever. Um, I love all those. I mean, they're all pretty much the same game. I had the uh, MVS cartridge version. I used to play that quite a bit. Uh, of course, all the MVS and a lot of the other ones use the joystick. Uh, what is it? Grand 1,000 miles rally. I think that's right. Street Fighter 2, take your pick. You got Street Fighter 2 or just... Uh, I don't know if that's street, regular Street Fighter. It's hard to see in that. Cyberball. There's a classic. That was a fun game. Fun two-player game. I should have bought more two-player games uh, when I was collecting stuff. Terminator 2. Speaking of two-player games. When I saw things like this, I go, well, if that breaks, I'm going to have to throw it in the trash. <laughs> I don't know how to fix a pretend Uzi. <laughs> so I tried to stick to things that uh, had... Mostly normal stuff, not always. Ooh, look at that. That's a clean APB. I do remember this auction. I remember this uh, big warehouse building it was in. You can see the wood walls there behind there. APB, that would have been a fun one. Huh. I don't know what this was. One button per side. No, don't know. Almost looks Nintendo-y. It's not quite the right shape, I don't think. Oh, uh, what do we got? Kangaroo. There's a... Uh, I need to flip my monitors because it looks like I'm looking away from all the machines. Kangaroo. I've been... You know, I was never a fan of Kangaroo. Never played it. And um, I know, Aaron, uh, you guys have been streaming it. I've seen some other streamers playing it or whatever. And it's kind of got me on the, the Kangaroo bandwagon. So there's Altered Beast. I had a um, a track and field, I believe, that was in an Altered Beast cabinet. Yeah, and Kangaroo is uh, definitely one of those 8-bit uh, classics. There's a Golden Axe 2. I, I played a lot of the first Golden Axe. Um, not so much the second there. Magic Sword. I think we already saw that one. Is that time? Was it Time Lord? Is that what that is? It almost looks like the marquee's backwards. I can't read it. I don't know what that is. I don't recognize it. Is it Time Killer? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. I'm going to put that on my list of ones to try out. I'm going to say you could have any game. Oh, that's the last one in this auction. Uh, I'm going to say you could have any game, any of those pictures uh, that I showed for probably $300 or less. Definitely $200 or less, probably, except for the uh, super classics uh, that were on there. All right. Let's see. We had another. Uh, auction here. Okay. So here's the other folder. I have to remember which ones uh, that we showed. So this one starts out with a trip. There's actually two different things of uh, um, two sets of pictures that are in here. And the first one was a trip to Cactus Jacks. Um, and there's a few of those pictures mixed in here. Um, right, yeah. I mean, if you went now, I mean, there wouldn't be a machine you could own for, gosh, I don't know, six to eight hundred now. 
I mean, uh, and, you know, you do see some stuff for 500, but it's it's um, garbagey kind of stuff. You know what I mean? All right, get ready for this first picture. This is uh, out behind Cactus Jacks, and there was a time where it looked like this every week. Um, so Cactus Jacks is my local arcade. It's the arcade that I grew up going to, and um, uh, they switched owners and they switched to um, uh, a lot of pinball. So the, the Cactus Jacks is kind of divided into thirds. And one whole, it used to be all three thirds. Well, it was kind of like arcade games, arcade games. And the last third was half arcade games and a few pinball tables. Uh, and they switched it out. So now Cactus Jacks, one whole third is pinball tables. They have 75 pinball tables. They have pinball tournaments and they have a, a pinball league. So the owner, the new owner is really into pinball. The middle third is all redemption. So it's all kid redemption stuff. And then the last third is arcade games, uh, pool tables, driving games. I mean, so it's really shifted. They really shifted uh, their focus. And so I don't remember why. I think I picked up one of the techs from Cactus Jackson and took him to the arcade. And if you like that picture, you'll like that one. Look at that. Now, the one good thing about um, Cactus Jacks was uh, when they found out that there were so many local collectors, they quit breaking these things up for the dumpster and they would just set them outside. And so I used to go out there and get marquees and parts and pick buttons off of stuff and uh, and uh, all kinds of crazy stuff. But uh, for a long time, uh, you would drive by, you could just drive by the street and look out behind and this is what you saw. It was really sad. So, uh, let's get to the auction. There looks like we started off the auction with some pinball machines here. Looks like a Terminator. Looks like, um, let's zoom in here. That Playboy game. I played that Playboy cat and that Playboy one at, uh, uh, the one up and the two up in, uh, uh, Denver, Colorado, and um, it's a it's a classic. And I don't remember the details. Aaron might know, but uh, I there's two different um, back glasses, if I remember right. There's one where um, the ladies are wearing more clothes, and one where they're wearing less clothes. Uh, I don't know the details of that story, but uh, there's something about that. Here's Area 51, and this was um, this is a uh, this auction was 2005. It was April 30th of 2005. Uh, so you can still see um, there's a uh, probably a 48 and one uh, cabinet there. Uh, let's see what we got here. This is kind of looking down the aisle at Area 51. Uh, looks like a bowling game, Golden Tea. Uh, what else we got there? Looks like another conversion down there, another gun game. There's another, oh, that might be the same. No, that's a different 48 and one. Uh, there's two 48 and ones, arcade classics, both those. And there's a Donkey Kong, uh, Dig Dub, a faded Miss. If you're going to get a Miss Pac-Man, it's probably going to be faded. Look at that, two out of three, one's less faded than the other. But look at that lineup, man. I mean, if you walked into an arcade, um, yeah, everyone needed a fuse. I think I've told this uh, story. This is not the Frogger uh, that I talk about, but I went to an arcade auction one time and there was a Frogger on the end of the row and I looked behind it and there was literally nothing in it. There was no monitor. It just had tinted glass. There was no PCB. There was no power supply. It was literally just the wooden cabinet, no electronics at all. And when we got to the uh, auction, the guy tried to plug it in and nothing happened. And the auctioneer goes, well, I know this is working earlier, folks. Probably just needs a fuse. And I was like, mm, if it was working earlier, <laughs> might have been some some uh, black magic going on there. It does take a lot of space to collect arcade games. Uh, I had a dedicated building in my backyard, a 14 by 40 building that I had my arcade stuff in. I had about 30 machines out there. I think Aaron has um, either basement or... Uh, uh, some extra space. Um, so yeah, you, you gotta, it's definitely a thing where you got to dedicate. I mean, it's a foolish, foolish hobby 
uh, and I don't recommend anybody do it. <laughs> uh, they're big, they're heavy, they're expensive. Uh, all this stuff can be played on MAME or uh, through a million different different things. So uh, there's there's no reason to do it, and yet uh, there are so many of us that are attracted to these uh, old classic machines. Oh, you have a separate arcade building? One of these days, one of these days, my friend, uh, when COVID has passed and, and we're all uh, vaccined up, I'm going to be uh, – Putting the butt in the seat and heading to the Northeast. Now, uh, that's not a jukebox I owned, but I did. I bought a lot of jukeboxes one time. I bought four jukeboxes. Um, it's a long story. Uh, what is that? It's not Space Invaders, is it? Yeah, it is a Space Invaders. I think it looks like a two way stick. It's Taito, fire button. I think that is a Space Invaders. That would have been nice to have. Boat, I know Boat Fest he keeps adding a year. I heard Boat Fest 2022 now. Um, here you go. Here's something for the Brent. Print Club. <laughs> That'd be a good one to have. <laughs> I guess that's like a photo booth kind of thing it looks like. Uh, this is... <laughs> This is uh, uh, the, uh, hey, Mitsuyama, we're uh, kind of wrapping up. We've been playing some NBA Jam arcade games, and we're going through a few pictures of old uh, arcade auctions that I went to. By the way, I, I think at this time, uh, I think I had my either uh, Samsung Blackjack or a Palm Trio phone. Uh, so um, that's why all these... Uh, as my kids would say, these pictures look like they were taken with a potato. By the way, uh, this right here, this is called uh, the the sad row of broken guns or something. <laughs> this is where gun games go to die. And then, uh, you know, for a while, I bought, I saw empty cabinets going for ten dollars, like all day long, five dollars and ten dollars. And people, everybody's got their uh, meme dreams, right? You're gonna get it and turn. You're gonna build a meme machine. Um, X Men versus Street Fighter. That's a good one. And these are like all in the back row ones. Rampage World Tour. That one looks pretty sad. Um, looks like there's an NFL Blitz, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Trophy Hunter. Is that that on oh, another Blitz? Uh, there's a that. Uh, no, I was gonna say that might be my Neo Geo. That might have been the Neo Geo I bought, that four slot there. I feel like it was, because I bought a few things at this auction. I think that is the four four slot Neo Geo that I had. I think so. There's the uh, two slot Neo Geo, four slot Neo Geo. I feel like that was the one I bought. I don't know. The fact that it's not on, though, I wouldn't have bought it if it wasn't on. But um, hey, Bark Bit. So you sneak in there. What else we got here? Golden Tea. Driving game. Oh, Snow Brothers. That's a classic right there. What is that with the uh, motorcycle on the right? I don't know what that is. Golden X. Anybody know what that is? Is it Atomic? Oh, Atomic Rider? Hmm. We have to check that out. Now, this is uh, one of my most famous pictures. I sent this, I posted this on the internet. It got spread around. It went viral before there was, before going viral was a term. Uh, but you may see this picture. You may have seen it on other websites or whatever. Uh, this is a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Turtles in Time. But if you know anything about uh, uh, arcade games, the. Yeah, this is, uh, it was uh, Star Wars. And so uh, this is where the flight yoke was originally uh, mounted, and they just mounted the joysticks there. Um, yeah, this is a, uh, this is a bad one. I, I've seen a lot of bad um, conversions, but that, that was a bad one. That's one that makes you sad. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't even look like it's playable. You know what I mean? Like, you'd be holding a joystick up like that and playing. That's weird. 
I don't think that's one of my Shinobis, but God knows I own a lot of them. I own three different Shinobis. There's another Neo Geo. There's a Tetris. Capcom Bowling, World Series. Uh, no, that's not the world. That's not the baseball game. Around. Now, you know, uh, this, I, I've seen a few of these. I'm always tempted to buy these. Obviously, I can't write it. <laughs> and my kids are too big for it. But I'd love to get that and put it like out, like beside my the door to my porch or the door to my building or something. Uh, I'm sure so, it would just walk off at some point. But uh, I always thought that would be cool to have something like that. But uh, most of these auctions I went by myself, and uh, there was a fat chance of me moving that. There's a couple of driving games. There's Power Drift. Yeah, cool stuff. Um, I would say that um, uh, usually, the, you know, uh, these games, they would start off and they would say, okay, well, who, you know, we'll start the opening bid at $500 and nobody would bid or $300, depending on, and then they would just work their way back until they got a point where, uh, uh, they would start the bid. By the way, that is, um, I believe, my uh, Sunset Riders. I think this is the auction I bought my Sunset Riders on. I think that's it. Um, and I was always going to buy the other PCBs or whatever uh, so I could swap in and out Simpsons and stuff like that, but I never did. But I had Sunset Riders. And look, there's me. It's Jack Flack and a reflection of a treasure chest machine right there. And if we look, I believe that is a Palm Trio 650. That was the phone I had. Does that look like a Palm Trio? I think so. It's really round and silver. Look at that. No gray hair. Oh, boy. To be young. and Let's see. What is this? 2000 five early so i only had one kid uh i still have uh two cabinets uh and they're both multi-cades and um uh now i've got a little bit of space so i'm thinking about maybe buying a couple cabinets look that that's a clean looking main machine look at that hachi machi checking them out <laughs> um so yeah i may end up getting um uh, you know, a couple dedicated cabinets. It would have to be games I love at this point, you know. Uh, or it could be Air Raid. Look at that. That'd be a nice one. That's a classic. And that's that's it. That is the last. You know what? I'm gonna see if I have any. Um, see if I have any other. Uh, uh oh. Stream might almost be over. Let's find out. Hello? Yep. Yeah. That'd be great. All right, bye. Had to take that call. That's the, uh, you want me to pick up dinner while I'm out. So dinner's on the way. Uh, do they need lots of maintenance when you picked them up from auctions? Well, the thing is that you never know what you're going to get. You know, you never know. If um, uh, the way that they would set them up is they would set up a, a big wall uh, or aisles of arcade machines. And then, um, oh, this is a really old one, but I don't know that there's that much here. Oh, yeah, this is a good one for one reason. So, uh, so they would line them up and then uh, so if the, the auction started, like, let's say at 10, from 8 to 10, they would have uh, all the machines, as many as they could, plugged in and turned on. So you went at 8 o'clock, and you could go around and um, check them all out. You could play every game in there. So I always went at 8. And this was at a time where there weren't many classic arcade games. I mean, the retro cave, the retro pub and bar, none of that stuff. There weren't vintage arcades really open at that point. So... Um, you know, just to go and experience all these machines again was worth it, you know, and, and going in was free and I would always register and get a card. Um, but you kind of, you know, you had to take, and I talked all about this in, um, invading spaces. I would take a, a spiral notebook and make notes of every machine and be like, this one worked this one, because the thing is, once the auction starts, 
Uh, then they unplug all the machines and you just go machine to machine and they would plug it in, you know, one at a time. But if the buttons didn't work or the joystick didn't work or the monitor was failing or something like like you, you weren't going to find that out in those 30 seconds you were bidding. So you really had to go early um, and, uh, and do your homework first, you know. So now that's not to say, I mean, you know, this is at a time where I was paying um, – Oh, you know, a hundred dollars for working games, a uh, hundred to two hundred. I think the most, uh, excluding one or two exceptions, the most I ever paid for a game was like two fifty. Uh, so I was really a bottom of the barrel type of guy. I mean, I got a lot of classic games, but um, you know, I just I didn't get the real classics. You know what I mean? And even those at this time, for three hundred to four hundred, you could have taken home any classic machine that I've shown so far, probably less than that. I mean, this was, this was the era where you could get Miss Pac-Man's and Donkey Kong's for, you know, 300 ish like that. Uh, so this is the first auction that I took pictures at. And this one is 2002 June. And, uh, so again, it was in this big giant warehouse. All these machines were set up. And so you went from eight to 10 in the morning and, uh, uh, then you would, um, try everything out and then they would unplug them all and then plug them in one at a time and start the auction. Uh, so there's a mortal Kombat two tri sports. Uh, you don't see that a whole lot. Um, uh, $300 is, is some money, but it's all comparative, you know, because like a miss Pac-Man now, like a beater will go for around here, seven, 800, you know, so it, they were a third the price that they are now. So, yeah, and I wasn't buying arcade games every day. You know what I mean? Like I would buy one, uh, you know, a couple every six months or a couple every three months. These auctions, for the most part, only came every three months. So you would, you know, save your money up and then go and see what kind of deals you could get. And uh, Let's see. It's Marvel superheroes. It looks like some redemption stuff. There are redemption stuff in Oklahoma. There's no real casinos here there are um they have uh indian casinos that are uh, run by uh on on um, reservations that are unique kind of machines so you don't really see a lot of real slot machines and stuff there it looks like a there's a super hanger on there on the right um an mvs for 1450 right so i bought a four slot mvs with um a 25 inch monitor and i think i paid 150 for mine so I mean, it was just a different era. You know what I mean? They were they were trying to give this stuff away because nobody wanted it. What were you going to do with a an MVS four player or a, a four cart machine in um, you know the early two thousands? Like put it in a laundromat, it wouldn't even earn its its keep. You know, I, my buddy who has a route would tell me all the time. He was like, "Hey, I put my Miss Pac Man uh, for free in a laundromat, and I split the money with him." And he was like, "So let's say it makes." Oh, right off the bat, you're going to have your uh, tax stamps, which here in Oklahoma, they were 125 a year, and then they shot up to 500 a year. So you got to pay $500 and you're splitting this money. So if you make, uh, you know, 50 bucks a month, that's 1200 a year. And then you take 500. So you make 700 and then you split that with the place. You make 350 now. Um, I mean, so there's not a huge profit. And if the monitor goes out, now you got to pay for a monitor or something like that. You know what I mean? So uh, it, it's it's a lot lower uh, profit margin than it used to be. So they were just dumping games. That's what this was, is just people dumping games. Um, there's a trash can for some reason. I must have thought that was important. But I think I'm just showing the whole the, the auction. There's a Moon Patrol. I would love to own a Moon Patrol. Um, 1,200, yeah. Uh, that is my dad. <laughs> so this is the auction going on. So you can see everybody here is gathered around. Uh, and uh, there's uh, the guy here is on a little stepladder or something like that. And they're showing a machine. And this is my dad. And look what he's looking at over here. Looking at Shinobi. Good dad. I probably told him, Dad, I'm kind of interested in that Shinobi. I think I might want it. So he was probably checking it out for me like a good dad. Oh, look at that. It's a trailer full of arcade games going to Flag's house. And look what's over here. Shinobi <laughs> and Bucky O'Hara. This is a dart uh, machine that I bought. So let's take a look. This is my dad's truck. 
And uh, this is his trailer. We've got a 16-foot trailer that he bought the trailer, and I've replaced so much on it that um, – uh, no, my dad loves, my dad's the guy that got me into computers and video games and everything else. So, um, uh, uh, so he gets it. So, um, that's, uh, it hooked up now. So the trailer, he bought the trailer. Uh, yeah, this is the thing. If you don't want to take a trailer and bring it home empty, you know what I mean? <laughs> so once you take a trailer, you're already committed. You're like, well, got to fill it up now. And uh, look, this is me unloading stuff into my garage. Uh, there's that dart game. There's uh, my, uh, this is the second of three Shinobis that I owned. And um, there's my Bucky O'Hare. And I don't know if you could see this. I believe, let's see, this is lot 55. Oh, okay, lot 55 and then seller 109. I was going to see if they had the prices written on there. I have the prices all written down of everything. Um, well, it ain't going to rain in Oklahoma in June. <laughs> the worst problem would be that it would cook them because it's probably going to be 110. Um, but, uh, yeah, man, I, I documented everything, you know. There's uh, the old Bucky O'Hare. And... Um, uh, that um, I bought that game. I was not a fan of Bucky O'Hare, but my last name's O'Hara. And so I was like, oh, that looks like fun. So I better buy that. So that's Bucky O'Hare. That's why I bought it. Here's the old uh, Shinobi. I thought uh, that sometimes they wrote the prices on these, but maybe not. Uh, they just kept track of it. There's uh, the old Shinobi. This is... Uh, I, my dad, uh, at the time, so my parents had uh, separated, my dad was going to bars and, uh, would, would go play darts and stuff. So I was like, Hey, I'll get this dart machine. And, uh, so I bought this dart machine. I didn't have it very long, but uh, I, I don't like playing darts, <laughs> but, uh, so I got it for my dad. So when he came over, um, so there you go. Look at that. That was the beginning of, uh, I would say the, um, uh, part two, Hey, pixels at dawn. All right, we're gonna do one more folder. I'm gonna. I don't know why I had everybody pick folders because I just. No, there's not that many of them. Two thousand five, we saw. Two thousand six, we saw. You know what? Um, okay, here's what we're gonna do. I'm going to end on a crazy story. And um, let's go see here. Um, how these pictures. Um, let's see how this is set up. Okay. You know, you just don't even get, you don't even get the, let's see, this is game day. This is the warehouse. Okay. Here's how we're going to do this. So we're going to go through two folders. I'll go through them as quickly as possible, and then we'll wrap this up. I've been gabbing all day and tying you guys' days up. Okay. So here's how this story started. I became friends with a local uh, arcade vendor guy. And, um, he and I, I bought games from him and he would invite me over and all this stuff. And so, and he was uh British and he's still around. His name is Dean. And I do a good Dean impersonation. He would say, Hey Rob, Rob, I've got a freaking deal for you, mate. I've got this commando cabinet. It's a great deal. It's only 200 bucks. You got to come get it right now. I know you got that truck and that trailer. You come get it. <laughs> it's always like dealing with like a, like a cross between a, a used car salesman and an assassin. He would because he would always talk like he'd be like, "Hey mate, I got this thing. You got go come see this thing right now." <laughs> so he called me one day, and he says, um, uh, "Hey, there's this. Um, now here's the problem with these pictures. I think there's duplicates in here." Uh, or maybe I just ordered them. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe not. I think I just ordered some in a different order. Okay. 
So he calls me and he goes, hey, um, I'm going down to um, Larry and Terry's uh, secret arcade, something, something. Do you want to go with me? I go, what are you talking about? And he goes, all right, here's the thing. He said, I'm not supposed to tell anybody about this. But these guys I know, I've gone in with them. Uh, there's four members, and they have built a private arcade. And it's 7,000 square foot. And I was like, where is he? He's like, I can't tell you. You'll just have to ride with me. You can't mention the town. <laughs> you can't mention anything, but uh, it's got to be secret. But you can you can be my plus one. And I was like, why does this sound like, you know, possible mission or something? So I said, okay. I said, I'll go with you. So we go. And he's like, I'm serious, Rob. Can't tell anybody where you're going. <laughs> go, okay, Dean. Okay. And the whole reason is because I, I guess there was a local news crew or something that was going to do a piece. And so that was the only reason they were letting anybody in. Uh, and so there was just a handful of people that were invited. And so I snuck in with, um, with these other guys. Uh, it sounds completely dodgy. And, um, when uh, we're all done with everything, I'll, I'll tell you how this ends because it's a, a crazy story. So, uh, I, somewhere I have a picture of the outside of this building. Um, and I don't see it in this folder. But the outside of this building uh, looked like a metal building in a row in a place, like in an industrial part of town. If you drove by it, you would not know what it was. And inside, it was done like a cross. It was like a guy's hangout, like a boys club. And there were arcade machines. There was a projector. There was furniture where they showed movies. Um, there was a kitchen, like a dining hall kind of thing. Uh, so I was like, all right, I'll go. And he was like, Rob, I'm telling you, you got to swear to me. You won't, you won't tell anybody what you've seen today. <laughs> I said, okay. Okay, Dean. So I don't have a picture of the outside of the building. Uh, and so this is, these are kind of out of order. Um, but this is, uh, the back room. So there are multiple rooms. I think this was kind of like the classic room. So just in this picture right here, you can see Asteroid Deluxe, Galaga, um, let's see, Burger Time. I don't know what that is in the back right. There's a Donkey Kong, Donkey Kong Jr., Popeye. And this was the thing they said, every game that goes in here has to look brand new. That was what it has to be completely restored. So we're going to run through these real quick. Uh, there's me. There's a skinny looking flack there. Oh, it looks like Defender, Super Pac-Man, Punch-Out. This is all in that same classic room. And by the way, these guys, and uh, I always wanted to copy this idea. They um, used a projector and blew up artwork from arcade games and put it onto um, quarter-inch plywood and then painted them, cut them out and painted them. And um, uh, it's an idea I've always wanted to steal, and someday I'm going to do it. Um, again, they're, they're pretty large. Um, <clears throat> there's uh, one of the cameraman. There's me, um, next to a tapper. This is a, I mean, again, a restored, uh, tapper. Uh, and of course it's next to a real bar that they had set up in there. Uh, this was, um, one of the people with the film crew, uh, they had playing games or something. Uh, again, this, you're seeing a very, very small room in this thing right now. Uh, there's Gorf, Gravatar, Tempest, Space Invaders, Robotron. Um, you'd be hard-pressed to come up with a classic game that wasn't in this place. I believe this part of the arcade, and I don't want to spoil the ending here, uh, had over 100 machines. There's me doing, trying to do a selfie. Uh, look, there's me, I'm playing a game and I'm, uh, they're videoing me for their news story. Uh, there's the tapper. This is part of the pinball room, which is a separate room. There's getaway meteor. I can't see what all these are. Oh, there we go. Getaway meteor. Um, so if you like classic, um, pinball, I can't even tell you, begin to tell you, uh, how much money was in this building. Like I got the feeling that there was something shady behind all this thing. And again, I was told not to talk about it. And so, um, I mean, I didn't talk about it for a long time. Um, this is uh classic, uh, Atari basketball there. 
There's Punch Out. That's actually that's Dean right there. Uh, there's me, and then that's another one of the art things. There's Daphne, the original Daphne. It almost looks like I'm poking her in the butt, but that was not the uh, intention. I was just pointing <laughs> at the artwork, but that is a uh, now a strange looking picture. Uh, there's Dirk the Daring. This is a restored um, uh, Burger Time here. Uh, this is um, that's one of the twins. Larry and Derry were twins, or Larry and Daryl. Is it Larry and Daryl? No. Sorry, <laughs> Larry and Terry um, that were there. This is them trying to fix one of the machines. There's a Gorf. There's, um, oh, man, just so much, so much stuff in this room. Mappy, Cubert, Frogger, Joust. Um, this is the shot. This is one of the shots of the outside of the building. Um, and, again, um, you kind of had to go through some other industrial, like behind some other buildings to get to this. Um, and unless you saw them coming or going with uh, arcade games, you never would have known what was in this building. Uh, this is uh, more of the pinball room. There's a giant uh, pedestal. That's a conversion pedestal track and field on the right, which uh, they had several tournaments throughout the day. Uh, there's Dean. Uh, that's from the other side. Kangaroo, Dig Dug, Punch Out. And there's more of that artwork stuff on the top. They just look so good, and I mean, they're not. I mean, there's there's so few colors, you know what I mean, to uh, to make that. I really, really should have uh, should steal that idea for the artwork. Um, oh, like I smell like strippers. I don't know what the story behind that. That's Dean. Uh, there's part of the track and field, and if you could see that, um, this was a custom, like I said, uh, big cabinet for track and field with a plexiglass uh, control panel. It was, it was really cool for. Uh, tournaments and stuff big neon strip inside there uh there's the same cabinet so this is oh there's more of that artwork there's miss pac-man and dig dug up there uh but anyway like i said those were all painted you know on uh, plywood and then cut out and uh uh hung around the room it was it was a really good idea there's a <laughs> little dude there uh so that i'm just kind of skipping through when i see the uh you know, kind of same areas. There's the bar area that was in the, kind of in the front with the tapper machine. This is kind of the open living space in the middle. If you can see that, that's a uh, uh, pool table and, and tables and chairs. And um, I mean, it really just had this like a lodge kind of uh, feeling, you know, they had a lot of money in this. Uh, there's a Flash Gordon, which I'm a huge uh, fan of the 80s Flash Gordon. Uh, final lap two. What else? Outrun. So this is the driving area. Uh, they had a whole bunch of different driving games and stuff that, uh, all set up. Kung Fu Master, Tetris. Again, the, uh, the restoration on this. Um, there's a lot of money in this, Aaron. I'm not going to lie. A lot of money. Uh, there's a... a Oh, did you own that final lap too? Let me go back and look. At, oh, God, yeah. I hope, uh, I assume that comes apart somehow to move it. Maybe the, I guess the seeds come off or whatever. But man, like I've had a couple of driving games and they're all, uh, they're all crazy heavy. Um, crazy Climber, speaking of crazy. Um, oh, that's uh, <laughs> one of the repair, one of the guys that was, uh, uh, back there working on machines, Stargate Defender. Uh, this is the same. This is the classic room. Uh, <laughs> tools stacked up. There's a space in there. And I thought that that one must have taken a lot of time to cut out too. Um, be happy with just one game. Well, yeah, that's um. Uh, that's not uh, that's not Dean. That's uh, uh, Troy, I believe, one of the other guys. One of the other investors, as they were called. There were four investors. This is another shot of the uh, open area, the lounge kind of area. You can see the pool table, foosball. Uh, that whole back thing back there is a bar or like a kitchen table. Or not a table, but like a kitchen bar that ran the whole length of the room back there. And, and uh, so you could prepare stuff and put it out like buffet style and they, they fed everybody that day. Um, there's a projector screen and uh, 
Uh, I always love, you know, and this, I'm sure they made this with the same uh, style uh, of artwork, but uh, I just want to zoom in on that just so you can see that. I always thought that was cool <laughs> back there. Um, so the day uh, came to an end. You know, we basically, everybody was like, oh, there's a little ride for the kitties. Uh, you know, everybody played their games. We were there for, I don't know, four or five hours. Uh, this is <laughs> the the buffet. Uh, we took pictures at the buffet just because uh, we all got sick. A little tapper action there. Um, this was kind of another area. I think this was like the loading dock towards the back. Um, where you could bring stuff in and out, and um, they had a few things back there. So, now, if you think that was a lot of games, and I'm going to go through this next thing faster, I got a call that said um, they needed help uh, going through the warehouse and wanted to know if I wanted to come see the warehouse. And I said, you know, I, I've been to the secret layer, you know, and they said, no, that's the, that's the arcade. Do you want to come see the warehouse? This is a warehouse that these four guys put together. So these are the games that they had purchased that hadn't made it to the building yet. Again, I'm going to go through these super fast. So, um, because there's a lot of games that these guys owned. Again, these are four private, uh, they called themselves investors, that had gone in and um, basically bought every arcade game they could find within about a 200-mile radius. So, this is their, this was um, a warehouse space that was, uh, one of the guys had ties to a furniture business and they had an empty warehouse and they had taken over the empty warehouse. Uh, I'm not going to even try to name every machine that we go through, but I'm just going to flip through here real quick. Uh, so I did, I, I went at one point, just went around the room and tried to take pictures of as many machines. If there's something super odd or anything like that, no, this was no, none of these guys were vendors. This was all personal private collectors. Um, that uh, well, Dean had stuff on site. Dean Dean does, but the other three guys were just collectors that grew up like we did, loved uh, playing arcade games. There's a couple space duels laying around. Catch twenty two. <laughs> Aaron, I know knows um, how rare just some of these games are. Uh, street football. Indie Heat, golly. You see that the pile of Donkey Kongs there in the back? Yeah, these are guys that um, had a lot of money and uh, don't know where it came from and didn't ask. Um, Popeye, Gyrus, Donkey Kong Jr., and then a hard driving, which I think doesn't, Aaron, do you have a sit-down hard driving? I know you have a, a hard driving or something. Um, there's a Konami GT. Uh, oh, and some of them have notes on them like, oh, this needs this or this needs that. And so um, that's what they were doing the day that I was there. They were pulling these, uh, uh, you know, just going through and trying things and seeing what worked and what didn't versus pinball. There's a, the Combat Tribes, which is a really bad uh, fighting game. Donkey Kongs. There's a hard driving sit down. That ought to look familiar. This Pac-Man's, there's a row of spy hunters because uh, you can't have too many spy hunters. Probably were, they were cannibalizing parts, uh, you know, Rob Peter to, to play Paul. Uh, I did do uh, some videos of my collection. I put them on, online on YouTube. Uh, yeah, I love the Nintendo cabinets too. And I, um, uh, there's a couple of Zaxxons. That's uh, my old Qbert. I sold them that Qbert. And uh, I don't know why it wasn't, I think it was just out here because uh, they already had one. Um, but uh, let's see. There's Tron. There's that. There's good Ghosts and Goblins. Man, that game is hard. Uh, Super Pack, Track and Field. There's uh, another Flash Gordon pinball machine. Joust. Uh, what is that? Off-Road? Off-Road Thunder. And Hydro Thunder. 
<laughs> All the Thunder Games, Cruise in the USA, Outrun, um, just random stuff, kicks. Uh, that is the um, that's the motorcycle that was in the other picture. It must have broken down between uh, point A, point A, and point B. Um, yeah, so, uh, I mean, think about not only all these machines that they bought, Aaron, but then, yeah, the rent on this place, rent on the other place. Uh, there's Phoenixes, Time Pilots, Laser Ghost. Laser Ghost? I don't even know what that is. Huh, Laser Ghost. Sounds like a cartoon guy. Oh, I'm a Laser Ghost. Uh, big bump. There you go, there's a classic tank. Uh, winner has a Pong clone of some sort right there. Uh, <laughs> I wish it were called Winner Winner Chicken Dinner. That'd be better. Uh, they had some old stuff. Look at that anti aircraft. Um, just the uh, gutted uh, Nintendo cabinets. Uh, these pictures were taken in 2010, so this was about 10 years ago. Um, uh, I ended up, um, uh, this is, I don't remember if this is my cabinet or not. I sold them my, uh, I had a dual-sided versus cabinet, but uh, mine had Dr. Mario and uh, Excite Bite, I think. There's, uh, I always wanted to, well, my dad would really like to own one of these, so I, I, uh, I'm always looking for one, but <laughs> the space would just be cost prohibitive. There's Sunset Riders, and that's a Turtles, Galaga, Kangaroo, Afterburner, Joust, Moon Patrol. I mean, it just goes on and on and on, you know. Um, this, um, actually, uh, Dean opened a, uh, a place called the 83 Arcade here in Oklahoma City. And uh, this uh, was there on site. And it boots off of a floppy disk, I believe. And the floppy uh, actually died, and, and we had to get a copy. And I helped him with a uh, turning a floppy into an SD card. And um, so he had it booting. But it actually boots up. It requires a floppy disk, uh, either for the tracks or some part of the boot process. But it has a it literally has a, a floppy disk inside. Skulls and Crossbones. That's a classic one. Tempest. Uh, Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3. Hang on. There you go. There's a uh, <laughs> a little throwback if you know your history. Right next to a stunt cycle. So which one of those is worth more? I don't know. If that's an original Donkey Kong. I don't know. One or two can play. Yep. Mario Brothers, one of my favorites. Tubin, that's a classic. Uh, Rolling Thunder, Defender. There's a Sinistar. They have a sit-down Sinistar in here somewhere. Uh, Tora, Tora. There's an old one. Space Harrier. Fire Truck. Two-person game. One guy controls the truck, and uh, the other guy controls the, the back half of the, the letter truck. <laughs> That's a fun one. Oh, you did cover stunt cycle. Oh wait, I list. Uh, I, I listened to that one because um, my neighbor had the um, standalone. I was. I remember thinking about that at the time uh, uh, when you were talking about stunt cycle because they had the evil Knievel, uh like the the standalone thing, like in the late seventies, early eighties, where you plugged it into the TV and and went and you know you go and then do your little jump. Uh, there you go. Sit down, Sinistar. So, uh, and, and, and again, this is the, uh, the stuff that they didn't have <laughs> over at the arcade. Uh, so, what is that, circus? I don't know what that is. <laughs> Traveling fair used to come in the summer, had stunt cycling. Yeah, it, it's a cool one. Bounce man from board, pop balloons for points. Oh, so this is like um, uh, Circus uh, on the Atari. Oh, it's called Circus. That makes sense. There's an old school Sprint. I love championship Sprint. Uh, there's the original. Some more Nintendo cabs. Elevator action. The very first game I ever bought. Power Drift. Xevious. Quartet. There's a, a pre 
uh, gauntlet style game, I believe, from uh, Sega. Um, yeah. So let's wrap this up and let me tell you uh, how this story ends. Uh, and by the way, we're about a third of the way through the pictures here, I think. <laughs> let me see what picture we're on. 669. No, we're, we're pretty close to the end. We'll go through them. There's only about 30 more. <laughs> um, you had a pinball at home when you were young. Uh, yeah, so the um, uh, pinball is a... I mean, I, there's a lot of people that say, oh, arcade games are a rich man's game. I always thought pinball's a rich man's game. Pinball machines. I mean, there was a time when I owned 30 cabinets, and I thought I could sell every one of these cabinets and buy two to three pinball machines and then play them until they break, and then I'd be screwed, you know? So, um, uh, yeah, I, I couldn't afford to get to uh, to get into pinball. Um <laughs> This one says restore written in the dust <laughs> on there. I love 10 yard fight. Uh, oh, aces and Kings. Yeah, that's a cool table. Yeah, they're both. Um, none of it's cheap anymore. Centipede. Uh, there's a bomb Jack. I know that uh, bomb Jack. There's a bomb Jack uh, game for the Commodore 64 that they keep updating. And I mean, they've been working on it for like over a couple of years now. It seems like, so I wish they would release that. Cause uh, uh, that looks like it'd be really good. DK3. There's the asteroids. Um, there's a bad looking. Oh, this is a. Uh, every now and then you find stuff like this. That's a pretty bad looking Tron. It also seems to be a convertible. If you look up there, it's topped. <laughs> um, so this is a uh, kind of some overview spot of the uh, overview of the. The warehouse and they would just pull games out you know whatever they wanted to restore pull these things and um work on them and and get them up and running and take them over to uh, the arcaders monitors i don't know if those are good ones going in or bad ones coming out but uh there's a stack of monitors there's a, a mega touch uh there's a little asteroids um it's pretty old school Let's see here. Yeah, there's not too many left here. About five left. This is uh, part of the junk pile <laughs> towards the back or the front, depending on where you're at. Um, magazines. Uh, instruction manuals. All kinds of stuff. Everything is sorted out. Uh, another... Moon Resta. No, Moon, is it Moon Cresta? Yeah, Moon Cresta. Uh, a pile of boards. Everybody has that. I think this is, uh, yeah, this is the last shot. So, uh, let me tell you the end of this story. I got a uh, call one day from Dean, and he said, it's all gone. And I said, uh, what do you mean it's all gone? And he said, um, the uh, arcade uh, in Lawton burned down. I said, what do you mean it burned down? Said, burned down. It's gone. So the, uh, the whole thing that I showed you, the first round of pictures of, uh, was destroyed. And there's no, the whole building uh, burned down. It was a metal building with a drywall on the inside and um, uh, it um, basically what was left was the uh, metal, the metal frame of the building. And that was pretty much it. Um, I was then told that there was no insurance on the building because uh, they had tried to get insurance, but they couldn't because part of it was built to be like bedrooms and it was not zoned to be uh, a living space. So uh, they couldn't get, um, you know, like business insurance because people were, um, I think one of the guys and his, and his daughter was staying there. So, and they couldn't get, uh, obviously couldn't get home insurance on a, on a thing like that. So the whole arcade, disappeared overnight and all the machines disappeared overnight. And then I believe at some point, 
uh, there was a falling out between the four, um, which you can kind of imagine, um, you know, when uh, you lose that kind of money and a location and there's no insurance and, and things, um, uh, you know, people thought there was insurance or whatever. So um, the basically what they decided to do was um, liquidate this warehouse. And so the warehouse stuff, um, got shuffled off through eBay over about six months. Um, a lot of it went, uh, 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 yeah, I see you, buddy. Um, uh, a lot of it got sold off. A lot of it got, um, handed off and traded and, um, it was, uh, Oh, Hey Bo. Oh my gosh. This is too confusing. And now I got two Amigo retro gamings in here. <laughs> Um, uh, but, uh, uh, so anyway, uh, yeah, the arcade disappeared, all these machines got liquidated and, um, and then that was it. It was all gone. It happened, uh, pretty quick. So it was the arcade, the secret arcade that nobody was to speak of. Nobody was, uh, and I'm sure other people have pictures of it or whatever, but, uh, uh, I know when I went to the, um, uh, the warehouse, he told me that I was the only person he'd ever let take pictures in there in the warehouse. So that kind of, uh, I think this is kind of the only document of it. And now it's going to be on YouTube. So if it, if the town was a secret, I don't think it's a secret anymore once it burned down. But um, there you go. So, well, guys, I have been uh, going and going all uh, afternoon. So thank you guys for uh, coming, watching a little NBA action, um, uh, listening to some uh, arcade stories and uh, looking at some pictures and stuff. Uh, always have a good time. Uh, I'm going to go check uh, Twitch right now to see if there's anybody that we should um, raid. And while I'm doing that, uh, if you want to see the, uh, other videos like this that I, uh, upload or share, go to, um, uh, youtube.com forward slash amigos retro gaming. You're ready for action. You know what? I'm going to be all right. So if anybody's sick of NBA jam, I don't blame you because I'm sick of it. But, uh, I played like four games and I didn't win. And I got to give it one more. I got to go. I got to go one more. <sighs> Do I want to? No. Do I like this game? No. But are we going to do it? We're doing it for boat. <laughs>Guess who left that shortcut in on accident? <laughs> Gotta fix that. <laughs> All right, let's coin this up. Oh my gosh. Yeah, so uh, my wife's coming home with tacos. I'm gonna eat tacos and then I will be flipping over to uh, uh, your stream as well. So, hey, what time are you starting to stream? It's uh, 6.30 right now. Uh, if you're going to do it in the next few minutes, then uh, we'll just pass the raid over to you. And if not, um, oh, this is for uh, this is for your uh, ARG stuff. So tell me in the uh, uh, stream, is it uh, ARG? It's not ARG Presents, is it? It's ARG. Um, and I just followed it, too, on Twitch. But, uh, uh, oh, don't start yet. I want to – I'm looking at the teams. Denver. No, come here, but I'm on Mutombo. Is he a good shooter? No, he can't be a good shooter. He's going to be a good blocker, though. Ard presents. All right. So um, go check out um, uh, here in a little bit. If you're not following it, uh, go follow um, uh, Ard presents on Twitch. If you're not already following, if you're not already following uh, Amigos Retro Gaming, you need to follow that. And um, Frodo NL. And who else? I follow everybody. I've just uh, I've, I've fallen into uh, fallen in love with watches streaming. I mean, it's replaced my my TV watching lately. I haven't been watching as much TV. I've just been watching streams and and uh, it's been fun to you know get an education.
And it's been fun to take... Oh, by the way, I'm on the left. In case you don't know, I'll be the one. Look at that, McCubby. Come on, put it in the hoop. Finger roll. Come on. Block it. You're 92 feet tall. No, don't shoot it from there, you stupid. <sighs> jump, jump, jump. Hit him. Uh, I've been schooled on every... Yeah. Head fake. Head fake. I'm nine feet tall. I don't need a head fake. By the way, I picked a guy that can't even shoot from the two-point. Pass it to me. Right, you block that. Oh, and Nate Robinson. Come on, Nate. <laughs> All right, give it to him to shoot. All right. Tie game. Oh. Has anybody played uh, any of these? Uh... Anybody? Oh, that should have... give me a break. Uh, I, want... I don't know if anybody has played any one of those um, NBA GM uh, uh, new cabinets. Great shot. You know what? Let's have a little bit less great defense. Yeah, so uh, uh, those uh, one-up cabinets, or uh, I don't know if they're one-up or the Arcade Legends, would you run down there? What are you doing? Come on. I got two guys that are at least seven foot tall. There we go. No, yes, 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 yeah. So it's, um, I saw it at Sam's Club. And uh, what's funny is, you know, those cabinets are like, less than five foot tall or whatever, but they had it on this big giant thing. So you're looking up at it and it looks like it's huge, but then they had a regular bar stool next to it that was taller than the uh, uh, control panel. <laughs> put it up, put it up. He rejected Nakimu Matambo. Oh, that's okay, but I rejected him. There we go. Lay it in there. I don't think they're bad. Um, I, I think, uh, and especially, what are you doing? Back out to me. All right, that was an ugly shot. I really, you know, I was doing better. Oh, block it, block it. Okay. It's going to be hard to play if three of the four people in the quarter laying down. Okay, he can hit that shot. So I don't think, yeah, they're not as heavy duty as the old ones. But I think the other thing, the takeaway is, they're also not, uh, he stole it. Okay. Mm, I'm getting my butt kicked here. <laughs> you can shoot it from behind the rim. Oh, um, yeah, I think they're, they're obviously, they're, they're not, uh, you know, big solid things like the old ones, but I think the, um, the other, the, the flip side of that is, is that the, uh, uh, electronics in it are obviously so much more modern, you know, that, uh, it's probably going to last a lot longer. The electronics, I think, will last longer. Um, I think if you've got it in your house, and uh, you play it like something that you paid $500 for, I think it'll last a long time. I think if you put it in a bar, uh, it'll last about two days. Mm, of course. Yeah, so that that's... Um, uh, And you know, it's funny, uh, uh, 
when I was a kid, man, I remember punching arcade games. You know, I remember, I remember um, watching people like carve their name into machines. And, um, you know, just basically disrespecting machines in general. Uh, and then I started buying arcade games. And then people would come over and they're like, oh, hey, I'd be like, don't put a drink on that. <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> okay, I'm just going to keep jumping straight up and down. Yeah, hey, it worked pretty good. Oh, hey, I'm going to be done after this game. You want to see the Kimmy Matumbo dunk? Oh no, he just shot full court. Oh. Are you leaving? Not a fan of. Not a, oh, I just did it again. The, uh, the jump button is also the pass full court button. <laughs> just punched him. Try the bread basket. Oh no. Block it. No, too late. 2730. There we go. Tie game. Come on, baby. Come on. One second left. I was shooting. <laughs> no, this isn't on the mister. This is just, um, I was just talking about that. I just got a uh, HDMI splitter today uh, from Amazon. So that's the goal. Uh, maybe tomorrow is to rewire some stuff. And uh, so I can split my uh, outputs there. And uh, uh, I, I think, um, I would say in general, um, like when I was playing Commodore games, the lag of playing them directly in um, OBS wasn't bad. But um, I played some PlayStation uh, Classic, or uh, you know the PlayStation Mini. I played Tony Hawk 2, and um, okay, that's bump. Punch that guy! Punch it! Punch it! Put in that hoop. And uh, it was just off enough on a game like uh, Tony Hawk that. Uh, it was affecting my gameplay. So um, I'm hoping by uh, splitting the, the stream, you know, and then watching, uh, being able to play on one monitor and record on the other. Uh, it just really, the other thing becomes um, something that I hadn't really thought about, you know, when I started doing all this, and this has all been a lot of fun, but uh, you kind of start, like, having to redesign your room based off of streaming, you know what I mean? Which is not something that I had uh, really thought about doing beforehand. I'll have to redesign it. I'm going to dedicate it to the Kimmy Matumbo if we win this game. Yeah. Might not be a problem. Look at that, it kicked it out. Oh my gosh, that was such a good play. Uh, the nail in the coffin. <laughs> 92 head fakes. <laughs> oh, don't shoot that. Yeah, I know the uh, Amigos had a, a green screen for a while. I've thought about doing that, but it's not just about um, hiding stuff necessarily. It's, it's about... Um, Look at that. Oh, I didn't get that shot off. It's about, like, where are you going to have your monitors for gaming? Where are you going to have your, um, uh, yeah, I don't hide anything. Look, I've got the mister. I've been had this uh, stupid Batman game paused for about three hours right now. I'm going to be coming back. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I remember the uh, early days of the 
I don't know how early the show was when I went there. Um, we uh, when I showed up to the uh, Amigas. Oh, I died. All right, hold on. We're going one more. I'm gonna win. I like just one. I just want to win one game. So the, we were uh, we were green screen, right? We were in front of the green screen. Okay, who we got? Uh, Indiana. Oh, Reggie Miller. Oh, Reggie Miller and, and Drep Shrimp. That's who we're going for. And I'm going to be Reggie Miller. By the way, I'm I'm uh, I live in a junkyard. This is all green screen behind me. None of that's real. <laughs> Wouldn't it be funny if uh, like my green screen <laughs> like actually was worse than a regular room? All right, come on, debt left. Pass it to Reg. Let's see what we got here. Let's find where Reggie's range is. Not a terrible shot for Reggie Miller. Okay. That was a terrible shot for Reggie Miller. All right, Reg. Look at that pause in the air. That's like a Jordan shot. Oh, boy. Okay, that's not a good sign. Yeah, I was like, you know what's funny? Um, the uh, the studio in front of the brick wall for a long time. Uh, I um, I thought that the brick wall was a green screen uh, because the thing was is that it was all those um, the little things that you had hanging on the brick wall. I thought they have like a shadow behind them, probably because of the lighting. And it looked like like a Photoshop kind of shadow, you know what I mean? So uh, I actually thought that the brick wall was. Uh, uh, okay, kick it out. Take it to the hoop. No, don't shoot it. Oh, I meant shoot it. But I think uh, Aaron, correct me if I'm wrong here, but um, when I was saying double layer monitors, do you have a monitor like over a top, like above? Your regular monitor, and that's um, like what I was thinking of is uh, if I could put a gaming monitor up at the top. Would you quit shooting full court shots, you dummy? I mean, the thing is, this game beats me every single time. Oh yeah, he had to go. He take care of his thing. I mean, the thing is that these games are so close. And then when I keep doing dumb stuff, I'm, I'm not helping. The score is yeah, his does it does looks uh, a little uncomfortable when he's when he's like got it pointed all the way up like that. But um, um, yeah, see, my problem is I've got three monitors here right now. So my main workstation, I've got three monitors. Uh, so I've got OBS on the right. Uh, my main. Uh, monitor in the middle and then uh, the one on the left which is where I throw the pictures and stuff to so um, if I put another one over here for you know through a uh, HDMI splitter or something that's that's the problem that I get into is where do you put a fourth monitor look at that Miller runs the whole length of the court and... what is that That rattled in and out. I also have, uh, you know, the one thing about the Mister, and I talk about this on the um, uh, You Don't Know Flack on the Mister episode, is that, yeah, Deadlift Shrimp should never shoot a three point shot from 90 miles away. Uh, is that fourth monitor to the side? Hmm. Yeah, I may I may think about that. Cause I I mean I'm not gonna lie. Uh, I mean, put a monitor above these monitors is gonna be, and I'm so close to the wall that it's gonna be. Uh, okay, that's I'm pretty sure if you punch a guy and he goes flying, that's a foul. Or if you just punch him right in the gut. To go. 
There we go. You're a bad nerd. Uh, if you could see this uh, setup I have right here, uh, I uh, I telework uh, all day. So I have three 27 inch monitors, which are not my telework monitors. Oh my gosh. No wonder they were booing. <laughs> it should have been. Tie game. Two. Oh, I was on the line. Into the halftime. So I've got three 27 inch monitors, one, two, three here, and then my work machine is right here. And I have three 24 inch monitors, four, five, six right here. And then I have this. So I have this little U where I'm just basically surrounded uh, by monitors. And then if you look over the top, in the other half of the room, which I'm kind of breaking down right now, um, uh, is, um, you know, this is where you get into the argument, like I was talking about on the podcast for the Mr. On the far back wall, I've got the, um, I've got my Apple II. I've got um, the uh, Commodore 64. I've got, uh, I had my my PC. I have a, a Mist, and it's like, well, you know, or uh, not the Mist, uh, Raspberry Pi. And then at some point you go, hmm, Mister kind of covers all that stuff, you know. So, do you want to have? Um, I mean, do you want to dedicate a real Apple II, and then you go, well, the, you can justify the purchase of the Mister by getting rid of stuff, and then it seems kind of dumb then when you don't get rid of stuff, which is that's my mo. <laughs> Yeah, I have a, uh, a co-worker that has a, um, I don't think it's a 49, it's a 42 or 45, I don't remember, it's not 42, it's bigger than that, I mean it is a big monitor, but I like the, um, I like the, the vision of the multiple monitors because it helps me um, organize stuff like you could go. Like you can go, okay, my email's here, my scripting's here, my whatever, you know. You want to get that ball? Pretend like you're in the NBA there, buddy? Goaltending? I didn't... <laughs> wow. I didn't know goaltending was really a... Actually, I didn't know there were any penalties in this game. No, that wasn't a board. He pulled it out of the net. So why is mine goaltending? This is some bold donkey. Positive signal that. Yeah, that's exactly why mine's goaltending. Yeah, you know what? And what I got to do, Boat, is um, I'm going to have to. Um, I got to go back uh, after the stream is done here, after this game, and uh, uh, read read your comments a little closer, figure it out, because, um, you know, that's the. My wife told me one time, she's like, you're not going to be happy until everything is plugged into everything. And I was like, that's exactly, that's exactly right. Everything needs to be connected to everything. Yep, lucky bounce. Oh, okay, yeah, that'd be cool. And if you're not on the Amigos Discord, then you should follow uh, or support the Amigos on Patreon or support me on Patreon and either one of those will get you an account on the uh, Amigos Retro Gaming Discord which is more than just uh, podcast stuff. There's a retro gaming, there's a mist uh, area, there's a um, uh, uh, random stuff, there's technology, there's retro gaming, there's modern gaming, just uh, 
And the best thing about it is all the people that are on there, which a lot of them are sitting here in this uh, Twitch stream that you've been on here, that it's uh, uh, just really full of nice, helpful people. People helping each other out. People um, doing technical support and 3D printing things for each other and just all kinds of fun stuff. So that is my plug for the Discord. If you're not on there, you are missing out. I will be starting a new area in the Discord where I give basketball tips uh, for how to lose uh, NBA Jam by three to five points every single game. Fourth quarter, 10 seconds. <laughs> what a way to end it. What a way to end it. I hate this game. I hate this game. Oh, hey. Woo woo. Look at that. Thank you for the subscription. That's very nice. So, yeah, follow uh, me. Follow um, ARG Presents. Follow Amigos Retro Gaming. And literally, you will never run out of. Uh, stuff to watch it's literally people that love retro gaming and love uh, uh all this stuff so uh by the way i don't know if you saw that but uh, the guy who's dancing it's not peanut butter jelly time it's mr moon pie where you at where you at whoop, whoop, whoop. all right guys i'm getting out of here um i know uh, i think aaron's uh uh stream is going to start at seven o'clock he's uh on twitch at uh, ard present so if you're not doing anything in about 10 minutes uh, go give that a shot and uh, I'll double check just to make sure that he's uh, not online already. If he is, then we'll uh, we'll raid him for supporting us. But uh, I suspect he's not uh, probably not there yet. So let's go take a look. By the way, I'm just going to throw this out. Uh, I raided uh, somebody the other day, and then they made fun of me for how few raiders. We only had like five or six people, and they were like, oh, so don't want to toss out names, but we're not raiding that guy anymore. Uh, Amiga Live, Amiga Live is on. Somebody is streaming over there, so we will um, we'll throw the raid over there, and uh, if you want to go see, I, I'm not sure what they're uh, playing right now, but it's definitely something on the Amiga, so we will. Um, that's what I thought, too, uh, Pixels at Dawn, so... Uh, but anyway, thank you guys. I'm going to stop the recording.